Yeah, I know what happened, and that's unfortunate. I know what happened, and unfortunately, we it because we switched. It's like I'm using a different mic now, and I think it picked up on a different mic sensor, so it defaulted to the last one. But it's working now, and we didn't get that far into it. So um, we didn't. Yeah, what was the first one we picked? So I, I don't know how much everyone guys. heard, and and just for the sake of like, um, you yeah, know, probably. the whole podcast. First round was. Persona 5 Royal versus Rock Band. Pretty much a, a sweep, I think. Uh, Rock yeah. Band, a great game. We went with Persona 5 Royal. Uh, Nicole has not played it yet. I did purchase it for her for her birthday, so I'm assuming that after she finishes whatever Skyrim playthrough she's on currently, that will be next. <laughs> and then um, it's easily one of my favorite games of all time. So thank you for that, because I would have hated if we went like an hour and a half and then we nobody heard been anything. Hilarious. I would have literally been so frustrated. It's just a silent, like silent French style podcast. Um, and yep. so the second round was Bloodborne versus Dark Souls. We talked a lot about like the differences between the games, how people want to remaster Bloodborne, Elden Ring. Um, Nicole said that she like you know, wants to get back into Elden Ring. I was talking about how, like, I'm not usually a fan of open world games, but I got into that game kind of unexpectedly and found it to be really rewarding to play, at which point, like, I put, like, 85 hours in and I have, like, two bosses left, but I got tilted to the moon. Um, but we were going Bloodborne, I think, with that, right? That was the unit. Yeah, I think, I think for us personally, I think overall, I'd probably, most people probably pick Dark Souls. Um, mm -hmm. But I think... Between the two of us, if we played both of these, I think we'd both prefer Bloodborne. Even Dark Souls Remake, like, just Bloodborne in general. Oh, yeah, and I agree. I, um, I also really like, uh, Demon Souls, the remake that came out, so I thought that was pretty good, too. So there we go. Bloodborne's the winner. Uh, so thank you for letting us know again about that. Um, uh, hey, Roy, what's going on? Thanks for jumping Hello. in. Hello. You got a little person with the wrench. <laughs> a little emoji. Yeah, so Bloodborne was the winner there. Okay, awesome. So we'll move on to the next round now. Now that everyone can hear us and everything's back where it needs to be, um, let's move to the next one, which is your introduction. Uh, so we got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch, and then Pokemon Emeralds, which came out for the Game Boy Advance. It's a big matchup. Yeah, I like had a feeling for a sec that we did that already, but then I was realized I was thinking of Mario Kart. Yes. <laughs> Completely different games, but gave me like that Nintendo characters vibe, and I was like, ah. Oh. This one is interesting because I Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is like great. Smash is just I mean, most of us grew up with Smash. No matter what generation you were really in, someone had some incarnation of Smash. There's still a full community of people out there who think Melee is the best game for some reason. Um, and then, you know, Pokemon is, like, who hasn't played Pokemon? Like, if you're a fan of Pokemon in some capacity, there's, like, a, a tier list of Pokemon games, and Emerald has to be in that top tier, I think. Like, it's just probably one of the most complete versus, like, Black and White 2, which I know people like, Soul Silver and Heart Gold. Like, it depends on whether or not you've been a Pokemon fan forever. Um, I don't know. This is a tough one, because I think both games are really good. What do you think? Where do you lean on? Um... This? I haven't played Pokemon Emeralds. Uh, I don't remember my first Pokemon game, but the one I spent the most time with as a kid was uh, Diamond and Pearl. So, like, the remakes not doing well was pretty upsetting. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I've ever played Emerald. Like, I've gone back and played some of the other ones with, like, ROMs and stuff. But, mm -hmm. no, yeah, I've definitely played Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and I feel like they've done a really... I mean, Nintendo... What, it's been out for six years now? Seven years, the Switch? It's been a long time. I think it's been six years for the Switch to be out, and this game still sells very well mm -hmm. and does very well, and it's kind of like the golden standard for, uh, like, character fighting games like that. Um, anytime something comes out, like the new Multiverses game, it gets compared to Smash. It's just... That's what happens when you're the best in your genre, or one of your best in your genre, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. For me, it's definitely Smash Bros. Um, maybe a different Pokemon game I'd feel different about, but I haven't played Emeralds. Um, honestly, even if it was a different Pokemon, I still think probably Smash Bros, just because that game's a ton of fun. And, uh, they supported it for quite a while, too, so, like, that's, like, a pretty hefty roster that they ended the game with. 
some big fucking names got dropped in there. Like, I never expected, like, Minecraft to be added or anything like that, so. Joker 2 from Persona, which you don't know yet, but it was. Yeah, I mean, hey, those Smash reveals, like, those are still hype for me, even though I'm like, I have no idea who this is. Like, who's the Sephiroth guy? Hell yeah. What? (laughs) You You don't know who Sephiroth is? Or is that, are you just, like, doing a bit here? No, I don't. I haven't played his games. Have you ever played Kingdom Hearts? character. I played one of the Kingdom Hearts and I got stuck in like Alice in Wonderland and never, never finished. It's unbelievable. I, I want to play the new one though because there was like a Star Wars. There teaser, is a Star so Wars. I was like, but you got to play the other yeah. ones first. I played about eighteen hours of I Kingdom tried. Hearts two last month and I got bored after the Disney because like the story of Kingdom Hearts kind of blows and like I love all the Disney stuff like running around with Simba and fighting evil demons is pretty cool but like I don't know you know it's just. That's a whole other thing, but Sephiroth, I mean, he's from Final Fantasy VII, which is definitely on this list. I also need to play those. So <laughs> do I. I. Seven remake. She, no, I thought she was joking, too, because, like, I don't know, like, I mean, it's Sephiroth. Like, I feel like I, it's one of those I things where... I feel who he is, but I don't like, know, I haven't played his game. No, I well, just he, know of him, yeah. like, I can point him out. Yeah, I mean, if he was, like, in a room, you would know who he was. I guess that's fair. Um, yeah. Sora. Emerald is amazing. Um, it's my favorite Pokemon game, but I definitely don't necessarily think it's the best. I think it's up there in the conversation. Uh, I think the IGN list had Yellow. And the reason I switched it is because Yellow is widely regarded as just one of the worst Pokemon games. Like, it's just not good. I don't it, think that's true. No, so here's <laughs> an interesting... People like Yellow. No, no, here's an interesting fact about Yellow that's that like a lot of people may not one. know. Well, it is, but here's the thing. The game is so unplayably broken that after they spent eight months developing it, they had to bring in a guy, a developer, independently, to fix all of the issues in the game. That ha- like like to, to like fix it. So you know how those games like blue, red, whatever, have all the glitching mm-hmm. and all the stuff that happens? The games are so poorly built that they just didn't like those games are like I joked kind of not well, they're really. They're so old. Well, Wasn't right. it like red, blue, and yellow that were first? Uh red, blue, and green were the first three, and then they made yellow red, like blue, a week green, or two and then later. Yellow. Yeah. A yeah. week or two later. <laughs> Not a week or two later, but you get my point. I don't think that's I think people like yellow though. I so, it was on the list for a reason. Well, yellow so this is this is what I was looking up when we were talking about this, and I said yellow is just so ratings wise, the best Pokemon game in terms of what people have like rated it if you want to go by like ign metacritic and stuff is black and white too which i am not really? i'm not the biggest fan of but i have a couple friends who love them yeah those games both have like 96 97 percent ratings or something of that nature yeah um nostalgically speaking i grew up with heart gold and soul silver i really like those they had like the pokey walker where you could like get your steps in and hatch eggs at the same time Um, But those weren't as highly rated. So I went with Emerald just because it was like the most highly rated. I think Yellow is cute, but I don't think it's it's anyone saying that it. And this isn't like my Ocarina of Time thing, like like where I was trolling. If you like you could pick up Ocarina of Time and take like one of those things that helps you stay awake, like a five hour energy and power through Mm -hmm. it. Right. But with Pokemon Yellow, the game is physically like unplayable unless you. Master Caps at Heart Gold and Soul Silver should be most highly rated. I love those games. I genuinely think they're incredible. Um, and they're really fun and just like really kind of like the peak remake. But if you want to just look at actual ratings, that has a 95, whereas Black and White 2 has a 96. I mean, Pokemon Yellow has a 10 out of 10 on IGN. On though. IGN. And 90, 94% of the users like this video. 94, game. and like, Emerald, Emerald had 94. 90... You're in the 6% here. Emerald had. Oh, I, okay. So I, I implore you, because Heart and Gold Soul Silver has the same rating, but 95%. So technically. Um, but I was looking at games radars, Bull, and they use similar things, which is why I swapped it, because Yellow is just. It's just bad. It's just bad, and I think... I think that is your opinion. Two sets of... Well, yeah, I mean, that this whole thing is, of course, opinion, but I do agree with Master Cap here. I think Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver are the best, um, personally, but I have the only one... I've played every single one, except... Um, what's the one that came out last year with Dialga and Palkia? Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, I love the Pokemon in those games, but the DS ones, which I kind of grew up with... Were very slow, like physically to play, um, which I did not love. But I was hoping when they made the remakes, they'd like fix that a little bit. And from what I heard, they're not like they're not significantly better, really. They're just kind yeah. Of the only like, thing I'll give you is Screen Rant ranked them according to Metacritic, and Yellow's not even on the list. Of yeah, no, I looked so. at this before, and I was like, oh well, my, my. But also, you're also comparing like so many great things together. So like, there's gonna be a good thing that ends up being at the end, even yeah. though it's not 
actually bad. Everything else is just so much better, which is how I feel when I rank like anything. Mm. <laughs> when I'm ranking like Marvel movies, I'm like, this one's not bad, but it has to be at the bottom because the others are better. Well, except Eternals. But yeah, that's a whole uh, a whole other topic for another day, I guess. Um, I'm going Smash either way, though. It could be any Pokemon yeah. game and I'm picking Smash. That's what I said. So I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, Smash wins this one. It's just too significant. Like, it's just, it's it's always going to be fun to pick up Smash and play games with friends, especially with online. Whether or not we'll get, like, another one on whatever Nintendo's next generation system is that they announce in, like, 2029 um, will be, you know, remains to be seen. But I think they, they've pretty much perfected the, the genre. And Yellow has left yeah. out a lot because even though it's similar to Blue and Red, it had very minor changes. I think it's assumed that all three are the same. So... I definitely think yellow is much better than blue and red because those games, if you go back and play them, sometimes they just don't work. Um, I know they re-release well, them. Well, them not working doesn't reflect like how good a ga- the game is, though. I mean, take Cyberpunk. That game's fantastic, and it didn't work. <laughs> right, but Cyberpunk didn't work because they rushed it out to meet a deadline instead of waiting until they had a finished product. It's it's. Listen, it could... Cyberpunk should be on this list. That's all I'm saying. No, listen, I I don't have anything negative to say about cyberpunk i haven't played it but i have i know a lot of people who have who said at the beginning it was really frustrating because it didn't work but once you actually play it if you get it on something that works it's a really good game so nothing negative to say i can't even talk i i love keanu reeves like the game seems fun nothing bad to say about cyberpunk but it definitely was released prematurely i do think that's a pretty fair statement if they had just waited i think they would have had um less like negativity as a result they just should have not game they we need to leave the last gen behind and that goes for everything like horizon should not have come out on ps4 it worked fine but we need to stop doing that we just gotta move on to the next generation well the problem is no one can get ps5 still i mean it's easier now i guess because it's like cues and stuff but it's not like listen your average... i've gotten more than one ps5 if you don't have a ps5 still and you've been trying since launch you're not trying that hard okay That's, just, this just in nicole says if you're poor you suck no, it's not about not trying to buy one. It's if you're tr- actively trying to buy one and can't, you're not trying that hard. If you don't want to pay nine hundred dollars, no, I've all of mine have been retail. Okay, They've all yeah. been from no, I, I, retail. my friend was able to get like two or three. A Series X is easier now. I'm pretty sure if you follow like people like Wario sixty four on Twitter and like other stuff where they just tweet out like the links, it's probably easy to get now. The reason I haven't bought one is because a my roommate has one, and so like there's nothing out currently that like. I'm, like, in that much of a dire rush to play on PS5 that, like, I can't, like, Bug wait snacks. and play. Well, Bug Snacks seemed cool, but it's also, like, you know, it's Bug Snacks. Fair, fair. It's cute. Anyway, next round. Super Metroid for uh, SNES and Half-Life 2 for, uh, well, Yikes. multiple different things. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Nicole has never played either of these. Am I wrong on that? No, you okay. are correct. Okay. <laughs> I have played Half-Life 2, but I have not played Super No, Metroid. I, you know what? I did play Half-Life, but I don't know which one. I played on Steam. Mm-hmm. It was very low res. Was that Half-Life 2? <laughs> there was little crab things I had to shoot with a gun. Half-Life 2 is on Steam. Uh, it came out in 2004. It shouldn't have been too bad graphics-wise, but maybe it's a little bit, like, out of it. Um... To be fair, I also wasn't playing on, like, a great PC. Oh, okay, This All was, right. like, years ago, so I don't know. As I don't know. I know that both are very important. You made Half-Life go away. Oh. I don't know how that happened. Sorry. I guess it only yeah. had half the time. Um, yeah, I'm not going to have an opinion on this one because I don't. I think if I was like picking just from what I know about them, I'd probably say Half-Life just because that's more my, t- my my style of game. But that's all I got. So I'm going to go Metroid here because Super Metroid was kind of like one of the definitive it's it's actually credited for inspiring the metroidvania genre as a whole which brought games like bloodstain games like shovel Knight. i mean you could literally go through hollow knight even technically um th- there's so many games and it, it's considered the defining sort of metroidvania like that was the first oh is one. that where they get the name from that's no, literally no where idea. it comes from the game itself it has you know is still you know it, it's still popular nowadays because it's a big speed running game, so people play it to like speed run it, beat through it as quickly as possible. But it is widely considered one of the best video games of all time, and even into two thousand three, two thousand four, it had was still selling like millions of copies. And so it's kind of like up there with like Symphony of the Night in terms of like not only inspiring like hundreds of indie games and developers, but also just 
setting the stage for what would become like one of the most influential genres in gaming, I think. Uh, so just on that significance alone, I think Super Metroid's the, the pick, but and we could certainly we could certainly uh, see if anyone wants to weigh in on the chat as well. It seems so. Metroid makes sense though. I'd go Metroid. I I almost bought Metroid Dread this past year because of the hype, but like the more I kept watching stuff, I'm like, none of me wants to play this. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so much other stuff I want to play. I was like, I don't want to run away. I I hate being chased in games, so I was like, none of me wants to try to play Metroid while being chased by this evil robot. <laughs> Which is, it did look cool though. I, yeah, I have a friend who's a huge Metroid fan, and he loved it. He thought it was his game of the year last year. Um, I won't say that I've. Pri oh, we're talking about Dread. I haven't played it. Um, I own Prime. I've played Prime, which is the GameCube one, which is you know considered, I guess, one of the best Metroids. Um, it it didn't look bad. It just never looked like it was an urgent thing to buy. And there were other games coming out around the same time, and it was just like, well, I know if I buy this, it's gonna sit on my shelf. I'm not gonna play it. So might as well like you know go in a different direction so yeah i tried wins just because samus is a woman like we love that that's true for yeah. like for games to be like psych your you, your male protagonist you thought you had is actually a woman and like guys still like the game it's like that's crazy listen i don't know <laughs> be careful gta 6 is gonna have a female protagonist and like half oh, the internet no. was in an uproar about it even though oh, like no a woman driving a car well that's scary i get yeah. that but like the difference with i'm kidding for the record the difference with it, there's so many good female, female protagonists in game. Like Lara Croft from Tomb Raider is fantastic. Like Ellie was great in Last of Us. I mean, I mean, well, could argue whether or not she's a protagonist in the second game, but you get the point. Like I don't know. I feel like there's been a lot of even um, Aloe Vera, whatever the fuck her name is from Horizon, is a uh, is a cool female protagonist. I've never played the game. Aloe gonna, Vera. I don't know her fucking name. You just rub her on <laughs> your skin and you get fucking sunburn or some shit. Aloy. That's the one. Oh god, aloe vera. I don't Aloy. know. I'm not. I've never played Horizon. My best friend is super into it. I. It's. I'm sure it's wonderful. Um, oh, it's absolutely wonderful. But open world games. If, once you've done God of War, you got to go there. I don't know. You can railroad Horizon. Can you? Just straight shot. Oh yeah. It's like story based. Play games, it on and easy. I don't want to play something that's like. I don't. I. The, my thing with open world games, which is why I didn't like games like Red Dead Redemption Two, is because they spend so much time trying to get you to be like, look at what you can do. You can ride this horse in real time from fucking halfway across the map. Let me play the game and like get immersed in the story versus just. I don't. The care. story is the best part of Horizon. Is it? Like, okay. You really should. Oh yeah, you should really just play on easy, whatever like the casual like story difficulty is, so that way you can just like bop from story to story point because it's so worth it. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna have to pick a game for each other to play at some point and then report back on this. If her, I don't, I don't even look. I don't even know if Horizon's on this list. Don't tell me. Just I don't know either. Disappointed. But you might be. Let's find out. All right. Uh, next up, I'm gonna swap to the next ones and let you introduce this. Oh, uh, this one is this uh, one is no. this is a lock for me too. But I'll let no. you handle it. Oh God, we got Titanfall two versus The Last of Us. Yeah. I'm really sad. <laughs> Both of these games are so good, and I wanted Titanfall to go farther than this. <laughs> I really did. I saw this matchup, and I was like, well. Oh man! All right. Well, I actually recently recently played Titanfall. I played Titanfall two more recently than I played The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. When The Last of Us first came out, I played it on PS3, I think, for like a little bit, and I got to like the very beginning part where you're like hiding from clickers, and I was like, no, I don't want to play this. Not because of the clicker, just because like I don't like forced stealth in games. Like I want the option to do like. Yep both and that was one segment that you had to like if you got notified you would just die like there was no getting out of it so i was like mm, that's not my kind of, i don't want to play this obviously last of us fucking blew up people loved it and so last of us is one of the games i went back to and replayed mm -hmm. and my god yeah that is the one fucking good game it is yeah, definitely definitely definite uh different experience like uh the second time around very good story just very good everything i think i there is no remake of that I played on PS4, though, so I don't know if they, like... I think they did, right? They did, Last like, a PS4 version. I don't know. Yeah, yeah they did. There was, uh, the one I played, actually, was the remastered version on PS4. or the yeah. I was... think that, yeah, I think that is what I played. And then I also played the DLC, which was fantastic as well. Yep. That added, like, a lot to Ellie and everything. But, yeah, I also played Titanfall. Um, I was big into Apex Legends. I played that a gross amount for, like, multiple I years. And I only... Yeah, I only just stopped playing this year. My friend and I were, like, kind of burnt out, um, which isn't to, I, Apex's fault. It's just, like, any game like that. Like, we played that mm -hmm. often and just got tired of it. Um, it was 
well, obviously a lot of fun. So my friend was like, you got to play Titanfall too. Like it has a really good campaign. That is like one of the best like short campaigns you're ever going to play. And like for when Titanfall 2 came out, like I feel like that must have been fucking crazy to be experiencing at the same time because it has a very good story. Mm -hmm. And there's just like a very good sequence that I don't want to spoil in case people haven't gone to play it. But there's just like a very, very cool sequence in that. And I was like very surprised that they were able to pull it off in a time where like, I don't think the tech was that advanced for games yet. And I was like, that was really fucking cool. And then their multiplayer too, like their servers are still up and I hopped into some of like their mech multiplayer modes, which were fantastic and literally so much fun. I'm like so sad I didn't play Titanfall 2 when it came out so I could be like part of that moment. But yeah, no, Titanfall 2 was also great. This is a tough matchup. Yeah, uh, Titanfall 2 I only played briefly. I didn't hate it. Um, it was definitely kind of fun, but um, Last of Us is like one of the most significant games I've ever played, like kind of like reaffirmed my love for gaming as a whole. Um like, it's just, it's such a weird game because it really is, like, it's like a movie. Like, you're kind of going with these characters on this journey, but at the same time, like, the gameplay is not terrible. There's still, like, a lot of fun, like, I don't love the Force Stealth either. I'm very bad. I usually just, like, balls to the wall, just, like, run out and fucking hope for the best. And then, like, the fuck did I die? Like, what happened? But, like, I don't know. One of the, Last of Us one of only two games that's ever made me, like, like, emotional, ever. And, like, specifically, like, the first... I won't spoil anything because I know the remaster is coming out. And some people might want to play that haven't played it before. But the first, like, 20 minutes of the game, there's just a moment where you're just like, holy shit, like, this just happened. And you just kind of sit there like, what the fuck actually happened? And that's the start of the game. Like, that's not even there. So when a game they can love get doing that. that emotional response in a game, which The Last of Us 2 had as well, for the record, not too far in either. Very different, but, like, very much still there. Those, those games just, like, don't come along all that often where, like, people either get... You saw how mad people got on Twitter and stuff about, like... Or on the internet in general about Last of Us 2, which I know isn't the game we're talking about, but I think it adds to the total point. Like, Last of Us 2 was a fucking great game as well. You played it, right? Uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah. I played Last like, of Us Abby was a fantastic out. character. People hated on Laura Bailey. For I no, loved there Abby. Were, like, there were people, like, hating on the actress because of how much they hated the character. And, like, I don't condone that at all. That is completely unacceptable, but... It does show you the level of emotional involvement that these that people have for these characters, and like, not a lot of games get that. Like Last of Us just nailed it, and I didn't even want a Last of Us two. I thought the first game ended perfectly. I was worried that the second one would actually diminish it, but it ended up being just like really good, even if it wasn't like a feel good story. Like no character came out of that. Like I didn't feel like any character came out of that looking like a great character. You know what I mean? There was just like a. It sort of plays into the whole idea that like. You know, nothing's all perfect in life or whatever. So, I don't know. I just think Last of Us is just such a good story game that carries itself with good gameplay. But you're really just playing that game, like, immersing yourself and you kind of get connected with those characters. And it's not a knock on Titanfall. It's really just like a, a thumbs up on Last of Us. Yeah, they're both really good. And they have the show coming out, too, which I think will bring a lot of people's attention to it that, like, wouldn't have played the game otherwise. Hopefully it gets more people to, like, want to play the remake because it is a really good game. Um, but, yeah, I'm on the uh, Joel's a bad guy train, so <laughs> don't know how you feel about that I, one. But... So, like, I've had this debate with my roommate, and he is very much on that train as well. And I don't think Joel's a good guy, right? Like, I, like, I... I'm going to just, like, put this out there briefly. I, I'm going to mention a brief spoiler or two. So if you're, like, not super caught up with Last of Us 2, I mean, it's been a couple of years, but just to give anyone a chance to, like, pause or skip through, like, a minute or whatever. Joel's death in the second game was very... It was, like, it was... You didn't really feel that bad because he kind of deserved it. But let's not forget that, like, the man not only lost like his child he almost lost his second child and the argument is like well he doomed humanity because he didn't but there was no like guaranteed proof that had he even let everything play out the way it was supposed to that the world would have been saved like he's a douche but he's a human <laughs> like he's not like we all of us can sit on our high horse and go we would have done this but like if it was our child right. can we really say that we would have just let that person die on a chance like i don't know i Joel is not a good guy, but I don't think he's, like, this horrible person either, and I think that's No, he's what, not. No, that's what... Oh, Master Cap said, Joel is a human guy, which is awesome. It's definitely not black and white. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's good. It's, like, most of the time you see our protagonist be, like, the best character, but, like, in this scenario, which is very realistic for what would happen if in a world-ending pandemic, uh, 
you see like how people would truly react like master cup said it's not black and white you see like it's pretty realistic to how people would respond to traumatic scenarios like this yeah and I just think that by the end of the second game, Ellie was kind of a douche too, and and she oh sort of god, like, Ellie was such a I'm oh that's a whole other conversation. I was I'm so, so mad. mad at Ellie. I could do so a whole mad. Last of Us episode realistically with the amount of thoughts I have and time I put into that game, but like either way, like it made us feel emotions. Like I think they oh, yeah. wanted you to like that that the fight scene that comes to my mind with that game is um is. Because in the first game, Ellie is very much positioned as, like, a sympathetic character that you root for. She's got the whole right. diner scene with the guy, uh, David, and all that stuff. Like, she's very much, like, a relatable character. But in the second game, she's super selfish. And one scene I remember vividly from the second game is when you have to fight that, uh, the girl. I, I remember her name, but she's got the curly hair. She's the African-American girl that, like, chases you. And she's down in the basement. And you, as Ellie, beat her, and you can let her live, but instead the game just makes you hit her over the head with the thing and just kill her. And I'm like, that was uncomfy. Like, that was genuinely not... I didn't feel good doing that, like, hitting the trigger button. And, like, I don't know, you don't connect with games all that often, but Ellie just turned into a little, you know, kind of a whiny little bitch at that point, and it was just hard to feel sympathetic for her. But, yeah, I mean, I could go talk about that game forever. I hope the series is good. I, I'm terrified it's going to be, like, the Uncharted movie, which just... Oh, no, I think... That man tried it was a fun movie, you know, it wasn't anything mm. super like that critics are going to rave about. But no, I think with HBO and what, what people have seen of the show so far, just like seeing like what they're filming, I think it'll be like a pretty faithful adaptation and a good one. And plus both of those, the casting for them, I think is fantastic. Pedro know. Pascal can literally play any role he wants. And then I forget Bella Ramsey. Is that her name? Uh, she was, I only know her from Game of Thrones and. Her role yeah, I know it's the good. Game of Thrones girl, but I can't remember her actual name. I'm disappointed. I it's think not it was Bella Ramsey. Should be Hugh Jackman playing Joel, if you ask me. But now that I don't like Pedro Pascal, he was good in Mandalorian. He, might be he was a little also too old, but it's it's CGI. They had Luke in one of the Star Wars true. shows. I forgot uh, what is it. Uh, was it Mando season two? Maybe I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know. I just I've seen stuff online. I don't know. I gotta watch it eventually because we gotta do a Star Wars episode at some point. Um, but yeah, Last it's definitely selfish. So Last of Us has to win there. I I feel like um, these are all yeah. Mando season two is what it is. I think she was just trying to like not um yeah not I spoil wasn't it. But I knew I've seen it. I saw it happen. I love the first season of Mandalorian. I just I haven't had time and I sort of stop shows abruptly and like start other shows abruptly and like end up in a tornado of unfinished shows. So that's just kind of like my character trait and I don't like it, but it is what it is. Um, all right. Next up. Uh, this is, this is, Ooh. this is a, this Ooh. is a, Oh, I didn't know Apex was on here. God I damn it. saw Apex and was like, Oh, am I missing another game? So this matchup is Hades, um, versus Apex legends. Um, I'll put a few thoughts out here quick. Uh, if I compiled the top 10 list of video games, Hades would be in my top 10 without question. Um, it is one of the most fun, one of the most replayable. The soundtrack is incredible. It's there's just I could just sit here and talk about how great that game is a thousand times. I have played like two games of Apex, but I also understand I'm not the target audience for it. Like, it's just not my type of game. I don't love the Battle Royale type game like that. And I, I don't want to say anything negative about it because i don't haven't played it enough to have anything negative about it but i will definitely say that hades is probably the best roguelike game of all time and should at the very least be in any top 10 games of all time list that's just my personal opinion i don't i don't know if you've played it but i'll let you weigh in yeah i've played both um isame and chat says i've never played hades well you definitely should oh yeah all right you definitely should it's it's very good um, I've played both of these. I haven't finished Hades, which isn't what? necessarily a oh, bad no. thing because the type of game Hades is, is you die and you restart from the very beginning, no matter how far you've gone. So it's not something, I mean, I should go back and actually beat it, but I've played enough to like know the mechanics and know if I like it or not. Um, Apex, like I said earlier in the show, I have played a lot of Apex. Um, at the end of the year, PlayStation does a recap of like your most played games, how many hours you spent, and yeah, Apex was in the hundreds, multiple years. So uh, that was a very good battle royale. It was obviously made by Respawn, um, coming off of like Titanfall 2. They definitely had like their shooter down. You got rid of Apex. No, wait, why did it do that? Sorry, I don't know. I, it's supposed to lock and it didn't. That's my fault, but we'll blame Nicole. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I've, obviously with Titanfall, Respawn knows what they're doing with shooters and Apex. They definitely showcase a different set of skills. Um, they had a really good cast to start, and they're still like con- consistently providing updates uh, now. They have new seasons, new characters, new maps. Um, they change like every season. Like they've added new ga- game modes and stuff, which has been really cool. So they're really on top of uh, like providing consistent updates for their player base. Um, my complaint with Apex is that their loot boxes are fucking ridiculously overpriced. They've always been like that. You can play and not. Obviously, it's all cosmetic. It's not pay to win. Mm -hmm. But yeah, their prices have been absurd and they're still absurd and they've never not been absurd. It's sad. But yeah, no, as 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 a battle royale, it was really good. A lot of fun. Um, Hades is also a lot of fun. It's like everything I could ever want in a game. So it's kind of like wild that I haven't gone and like spent more time in it. I played on the Switch, which surprisingly ran super great. And then I ended up playing on Xbox because I think believe it's on Game Pass. So I wanted to play on the console. Um, it has really cool like Greek mythology if you're into that. It has like a darker tone. The art style is really good, and then the gameplay is just really addicting. Um, I'm super into Greek mythology, so that was like right up my alley already. They made Hades hot. Like, how am I gonna say no to a game like that? <laughs> wait, wait, and, yeah. Hades is not hot, is he? Hades, this guy, no, sorry. This is name? not Hades. Zeph- looks like Zeph- he's no. This well, is Hades, um maybe. But what's this guy's name? Zagreus. Ugh. I was saying Zagreus. Hades looks like 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 if the, the the devil went on like a binge of like alcohol and and watching like I don't know Hades is definitely not what I would consider an attractive man. Well, but to each their own. But oh. no, yeah, Zagreus. Okay, yeah, he's the hot one. He's Hades' son. For those Correct. that don't know, but honestly, all of their character models are hot. Like they knew what they were doing. They were like, this this is what we're gonna go with. This 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 is what the people want. So yeah, I do need to go back to that. It's quite challenging, but again, just like with like from software games, it's so rewarding when you finally like beat that boss, and then you have to do it all over again if you die. But hey, that's just that's just the fun of it. And uh, it's not he... to say they want you to buy. I don't like how long it takes to, be able to get a character. I believe it's in reference to Apex. If you played consistently like I did, anytime a new character came out, I had enough of like the in-game currency to just buy it. They had, like, the premium currency for just the cosmetics, and then they had, like, a regular currency um, for purely unlocking recolors <laughs> and unlocking new Apex characters. Hot. Look at that guy. That's a hot man, she says. That is a hot man. Look at him. Probably physically. I want to be Persephone in this scenario, all right? I want to spend, all, like, half of my life with Hades. It's fine. All right. I mean, I think they live forever. No, I'm with you. I Like I said, Apex, like, I don't know. Overwatch is a game that did a good job with loot boxes, I thought, because, like, it was all cosmetic and it was all relatively affordable-ish. But, like, they would do sales, but you could also, like, get stuff in-game. I can't speak to Apex a ton. I'm honestly a little surprised it's on this list, and I don't mean that as a dig. I just... I, I don't know. I, I just feel like there's games that were left off this list, like Kingdom Hearts and... Um luigi's mansion and lots of other games that like I, you would think would have been included but it's it's a fan poll they they pulled a bunch of people i, I don't know if, i don't know if i'd say i don't know if i'd say hades is hot but this game is hades is i absolutely recommend playing it it is on game pass um and so if you have game pass already like it's free basically and uh, I beat it. You have to beat it ten times to compl- like to quote unquote beat the game to get the final story. Um, really? Yes, but that doesn't beat the game oh, necessarily. Oh, that's so tempting. So you have to. Hades has like, and I'm another game that I could just talk about forever. Like I, it's such a the music is so good. But I like the Greek mythology aspect of it. I just think it's cool. And like it, to see that, like it's another reason I like God of War. But it's like obviously a different approach to it but like everything from the voice acting to the music to the actual gameplay like there's all the different weapons you can upgrade and it it's a roguelike but it you can kind of control your own approach to it and do all kinds of different challenges i know you love to platinum stuff i mean i'm sure that game probably takes forever to plat because you have to um not games like that (laughs) max out eight different weapons but then there's also like once you beat the game 10 times you unlock the uh the heat board and you can use the heat board to like add random elements of difficulty to get different like upgrades and stuff yeah so um esmia said kingdom hearts isn't on here i i agree i played the first one i liked it i played 18 hours ish of the second one just couldn't really i don't know it, I, it lost me because the story in kingdom hearts is so absurdly nonsensical but like everything playing with disney characters is fun either way it should definitely be on this list whether it's kh2 
you know, one of them should be on here, but I, I don't make the list. We're just reacting to the, uh, I think our list would look a little different because I'm pretty sure Nicole's would just be 32 copies of Skyrim and mine would probably be like, you know, some more reasonable. Persona, taste. Persona 5 Royal. Um, well, no, the first two Persona games are not anything Persona like Persona 5, the Persona 5 Royal. I didn't play yeah, five. I'd... I played Royal, but yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd say Hades yeah. for this one, which like makes me sad, but like. It has to be Hades. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend They're anyone play games. it that hasn't played it. Like, I, it's just such a really, it's just a, it's just a great game. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to play it again. Like, I haven't finished it, finished it in the sense that like there's still challenges I have to accomplish. But every once in a while, I'll just pick it up and play. And it's like I would shout that game to the rooftops for anyone that hasn't had a chance to play it if you like that genre at all. And again, I mean, he's just hot. Like, look at him, look at him. His this whole abdominal region is just a pumpkin. All right. Next. Like the Infinity Gauntlet. Kind of, yeah. Um, all right, you got this one, so... All right. We got Rise of the Tomb Raider and Halo 2. All right. Um, well, I guess I should probably preface this with the fact that I am an absolute fan of everything Halo. I own all of the games on physical media in every um, edition that they've come out in. I'm looking at them on my shelf. I have the windows vista version of halo 2 and the regular xbox version as well as the special edition so i'm a little biased uh however halo 2 is not the best halo game um i think halo 3 is infinitely better um no pun intended i grew up with halo um i used to have like my cousins and my friends would come over and we'd play like halo game nights with my dad and his friends and we'd all play online and like teabag each other you know, in the game obviously um and and all that and i i have incredibly fond memories of that i played all the halo games last year on game pass start to finish yeah so i don't mean to like derail this but like this is literally windows 2 i mean uh, halo 2 for vista it is literally only playable on vista and i had to pay a lot of money for this because it was randomly like hard to find but it's I'm just dead. Got... You just had that in like grabbing distance. Yeah, well, Tom, I my whole desk is up against the wall, and I have one of those shelves that comes out, so it's just filled oh, yeah. with games and collectibles. Like that's what's going on here. Halo Two for Vista. Um, anyway, the reason I preface that is because I adore the Halo series uh, a ton, um, and it's really fun. And Halo Three multiplayer is some of the most like memorable times I ever really had. But I think Rise of the Tomb Raider takes it here because I do think it's a better overall game, and I think if it was Halo 3, I would make more of an argument, but considering the fact that um, it isn't, you're not going to hear too much pushback from me on this if you want to go Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, I haven't played Halo 2. Uh, Halo Infinite's my first one, just because I didn't have an Xbox until Xbox One. Mm. Um, I have played Tomb Raider. Mm. I believe it was that one, and it was that unmemorable that I don't remember which one it was. Really? You did not yeah, like Tomb Raider? Halo I don't know. I like the idea of it, like everything about it I should like because, you know, it's it's like that Uncharted feel. It's like a female protagonist and she's got a bow and stuff, but mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. don't... I remember, like, not caring to continue, so I didn't... <laughs> I still would say Tomb Raider over Halo 2, just because, like, I know the other... I don't even know which... I guess this is the best Tomb Raider if it's on the list. Shadow and of the Tomb Raider is pretty Raider. good, too. Um, I've only played a little bit of Rise. I want to play them all because apparently they're, like, Uncharted but like almost identical to Uncharted yeah. in terms of gameplay with just like a different story. Um, and I don't know what was wrong with my experience. I think it was like, it was like downpouring rain and she was in like a tank top. I'm like, she's going to freeze to death. <laughs> I think that's where I like ended. That's fair. Yeah, no, I mean, I always <laughs> like to look for the, okay. I like to look for the realistic approach in video games. Sometimes <laughs> like you play Skyrim and you're like, man, I killed one guy. That whole village is going to chase me until the end of time. I mean, that's fair, but I don't it's know. Like, I'd probably say Rise of the Tomb Raider just because, like, I know yeah. what old Halo was, and I definitely would rather play Tomb Raider than Halo. <laughs> so I, I disagree on that side of it because I replayed Halo 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 last year in preparation of Infinite. Now, Infinite is not very good. Um, I'm very upset about it. I'm a huge Halo fan. I bought Infinite, Steelbook and everything, but, like, Ooh. they haven't Ooh. updated it at all. It, like the updates I can't have been multiplayer so still not in this damn game. <laughs> it, it's that that is insane. But even the actual multiplayer like versus when that came out in November, December, my friends and I played for literally like weeks, and it was wicked fun. And it's like holy shit, this is great. Like Halo Three is definitely the best Halo like multiplayer and story wise, and it still holds up well. Well, they did remaster Halo Two, so it's actually um it's actually good on that on that front too. Like it's definitely still playable if you're into those um games but halo 3 is 
infinitely better. Uh, they haven't updated Infinite at all. There's, like, no new maps. It's been nine months. The game's player base went from, like, multiple thousand people watching on Steam or playing on Steam to, like, less than a couple hundred active users for the most part, you know, up to you know, switching back and forth day to day. And there's actually more people sometimes playing the Master Chief Collection with some of the older games on Steam than there are people playing the new one, which should say a lot. But that's... Infinite was a little bit of a letdown in that regard because I just thought the multiplayer was so good, but they just abandoned it. Like, they overwatched it, where they just kind of stopped updating it wicked fast and overpriced all the other all the other merch and stuff. But yeah, I'm going to Raider on this. If it was Halo 3, I would fight it harder, but I realistically think that, like, you could probably go either way and be, be right. So, yeah. That's where I'm going. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Okay. Uh, let's see. What is next here? We've got Animal Crossing New Horizons versus Half-Life Alex. 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 I'm guessing you didn't play that then. <laughs> that is the one game on this side that I have never played. Um, oh, I have also not played that one. I okay. know people liked it, I'm pretty sure. And like, obviously it's Half-Life. People love the Half-Life games. But I think this was the VR one right? that did super well. That's all I know about it, is that it did really well, and it's the VR one. <laughs> I asked my friend, uh, we were looking at this, like, our, our games matchup earlier today. He was, like, I was editing some stuff, we were just, like, chatting. And he was, like, why is that game on this list? And I was, like, honestly, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Like, I understand why New Horizons is on here, because, like, during the pandemic, especially, like, people put, like, 50 bazillion hours into that game. Like, my, uh, my, my, one of my friends, I think she has, like, over... She at one point had like over a thousand hours in the game or 700 hours or something like in like that. the like, 600s and I thought that was a lot. Yeah, so. it's kind of crazy, but I guess when everyone was stuck at home with nothing else to do. It, yeah, yeah, it didn't feel that long, but it was <laughs> Half-Life. I, I played like I put like 20 hours into it and I was like, OK, well, like I built my island, like I've given the weird owl like everything he wanted. I, I don't know. Like it's a, it's fun. It, that's more of Animal Crossing not being my type of game, really. Because there's not much to do other than just build an island and give Tom Nook all your money. Uh, mm. But I I didn't play Half-Life Alex. I know it has good reviews. I don't like VR games generally. I feel like I, I like I don't I'm not anti VR. Like if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. But I also feel like I like to like have a controller and just sit down and play. I don't wanna like fucking you know, if you're playing it as like a niche thing, that's fine. But like I don't know, I've played beat saber and some other stuff and that's fun but i just like to sit down and play and get immersed um unless it's resident evil like if you ever wanted to play resident evil in vr or something i would definitely spot you that so you could stream it or whatever um just the, but yeah, might... the new just like playstation plug over here because i love playstation <laughs> their new uh psvr2 is gonna have uh like my the streaming mode it'll show me and the game which is really sick because like Without a PC, I don't know how to manage that. So, like, PlayStation is just, like, giving you that ability to do so, which I'm souped about because that means I can't actually stream VR games and, like, know what's going on. And it's always more fun for the viewer if they can, like, actually see what you're doing because I look like an idiot when I'm playing Beat Saber, but... Oh, what's going on? Yeah, you should yeah. definitely stream Resident Evil for sure. I feel like that'd I'll be a lot of think fun. think about it. I would um, love for, for all match. of us to just get together to watch you play. I and mean, we could just dedicate a full episode to that, honestly. And I would just sit here... Yeah, play this Resident would be a Evil. great time. Because I remember um, you kept your composure so well streaming Bendy that I feel like Resident Evil in um, VR would definitely not games. throw you off. Hey, Esmina, thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, I don't know how long we'll be on. Usually, last time we went about two hours, but really appreciate popping in, and uh, it'll definitely be up on like other platforms and stuff, and probably on Twitch as like a VOD too um, yes. for a while. So thank you so much. Thanks Have fun at work. Um, oh. Yeah. So for me on this one, definitely Animal Crossing. Like you said, I I had. Uh, a shit ton of hours put into that. I was on my, I'm like the 600s now. But yeah, I, I don't know how many hours I would have put in if it wasn't a pandemic, but it literally hit when people like were forced to be home. I was, my job was closed. Like it was one of the uh, non-essential workplaces. So like my friends and I every day would get on Animal Crossing and voice chat. And like that honestly probably saved so many of us from being like super bored and just like keeping that social aspect to our lives. Um, it was actually my first Animal Crossing. So I didn't have any like predisposition to wanting to play it. Like, uh, I already forgot what the other Animal Crossings are called. Um, but yeah, this is my first one, so it was, like, a fun thing to get into. Yeah, um, I remember yeah. buying it, playing it. Didn't really get to immerse myself in it too much, but that more had to do with, like, 
I don't know. It was fun. I liked it a lot. And I definitely enjoyed, like, making friends with people being like, I'm going to go to your island and, and, like, you know, trade shit with you. But I feel like I hit a wall after, like, 20. So how that tells yeah. that says more about me and my, like, I need to be, like, you know, immersed in a game. And Yeah, after like, a while, it was the same thing, and they stopped updating it. But it was cool just because it was a real-time clock. So there was literally something to look forward to, like, all the time in that first year because mm-hmm. there were certain fish that are... uh month locked in like time locks like some of them only showed up from like 9 p.m onwards so like you'd have to play at night you'd have to like wait till july you'd have to um wait for like different seasons which is really cool they had uh events planned for like all the major holidays and even some smaller ones and it being like a nintendo japanese game there was a lot of japanese holidays that they included which was cool because you got to like learn about those while playing the game yeah, and you and I both well known for our patience, so definitely the idea of having to like wait for something to happen in a game doesn't make my skin literally oh, crawl. I totally never <laughs> changed the time on my Switch. Oh, that's such never a cop out. That. She's like, it's great, you have to wait till a certain time, and then you just go into your settings and you're Maybe, like, oh, quick, just no. gonna switch this. <laughs> I played, no, I, I didn't really ever um, time hop, which it's like a well-known thing in Animal Crossing to time hop. Um, I never went forward. I would go backwards if I, like, missed something. Like, if I couldn't play a certain day, I had to go back in time to make sure I got to do whatever the event was. Or, like, for, like, New Year's Eve, they did, like, a cute countdown. Or, like, Christmas, so, like, my fr- if my friends and I couldn't get together, we would, like, set our clocks back so we could play the event together. But we, we didn't cool. ever actually, like, go that far ahead to, like, cheat collecting anything, but... Yeah, they did a good job supporting it. They've abandoned it now, which is really sad because it's one of their best-selling games. Um, they did do a really cool DLC that was paid, which I honestly, they could release paid DLC all the time, and people would buy it. So it's just like one of those weird Nintendo decisions that they're just like, we're done now. They still do like the yearly uh, events, but they're the same thing from the year before, like no new items, new nothing. So it's kind of sad that they've given up on it, but... Definitely Animal Crossing for this matchup. Funny story about Animal Crossing quickly, and then we'll move on. Um, I bookmarked this when I was researching for other games earlier. Uh, two days ago, a 50-year-old man reached the max Nook Miles cap in Animal Crossing. Like, they capped him out. He wouldn't earn it. Like, they play the game so much That's that they were wild. not able to. And the funniest part was his kid was the one who shared it. And he's like, my dad played so much Animal Crossing that he couldn't, so he got 999 million Nook Miles, and that's the max that you can get, and he was completely <laughs> maxed out. So that's wild. he said, my dad doesn't know how to use a computer, like how to use a PC for screenshots, so I'm posting this, but this is the cap that you can get. So I think everyone uh, definitely enjoyed uh, Animal Crossing. But yeah, I also, I, I feel like maybe it's unfair to Alex because I didn't really play that one a lot, but I think given my like predisposition towards VR stuff, in general and also like animal crossing just being so significant especially during when it came out i'm gonna go animal crossing new horizons on this so hopefully no one has any real concerns with that one um and yeah we're gonna move on to the next one then which is a a doozy it is a doozy this one i tweeted about this too i'll let you handle this one yes yeah, so we got super mario 64 and castlevania is that symphony of the night yes i uh get my screen went fuzzy symphony of the night mm-hmm. castlevania it's hard <laughs> well, to I show what it you're off here pick. um <laughs> i my pick might surprise you this is not my game my roommate actually let me borrow this to show off on this is like a hundred something dollar game for the physical um oh my god title which is crazy uh but these are two of the best games ever guys it's not, it's like, it's, it's, they're just, they're just too, like, I, you've never played Symphony of the Night, right? I feel like that's a fair assessment. Nope. Okay. You've played Super Mario 64, right? Yes, I didn't own it, but I've, like, Play, played it enough, enough like, in random places okay. to know <laughs> what kind of game it is. So, I played both. Um, this is a tough matchup. And the only reason I say that is I wish these two hadn't been paired up against each other, because I think both deserve to go really deep. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, it's got to be Super Mario 64. Yeah, it's that's just what I would say. More accessible. I, like, again, I don't know much about Castlevania, but... So, Castlevania, I'm curious if anyone in chat has any opinions on this one way or another, but I'm going to assume that a lot of people haven't played it. I, I didn't play Castlevania when it came out, obviously, um, because it was like I was like four. But like I did play it maybe four or five years ago, and even recently, it's actually on PS4. If anyone's like, interested in it, it's like 10 bucks. 
on PS4. Um, for you get that and Rondo of Blood, which is a different Castlevania title, which is not as good. It's like ten bucks, and you could play it like in all its glory. Um, have you played Bloodstained? Nope. Really? Because no that's the newer one. Well, no, Bloodstained is not a Castlevania game. That uh, oh. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night came out three years ago on PS4 and Xbox. It was made by the same people who developed Symphony of the Night, but yeah. like they're not with Konami anymore. They made a new game, and it's dif- very sense. it's different, but it's fun. I really like it. Uh, it's the only reason I ask. Um, I didn't know if that was something you had played, but it those just I've never been on my radar for some reason don't know um well if you ever want to play it i have it you can borrow it um it's it's a really yeah. fun game uh but the the reason i mention it is because like i just want to give symphony of the night the respect it deserves as like just a significantly phenomenal game in every way but super mario 64 is just more accessible like it it, it spans you know kids to adults to everyone who could play it it's much more easy to pick up and play like symphony of the Night's fucking hard i didn't even get as far as i would have liked to in that game because it is not easy um but yeah mario's just a lot of fun it's good just... levels i like jumping through paintings that's fun and this is the one with like the little penguin guy that you can throw yes. off a cliff right? yep <laughs> that's your takeaway from this that is my takeaway you can I think commit that's murder <laughs> that's hilarious i saw somebody's fan mario kart like the next edition for like what they wanted the characters to be and one of them was that penguin really <laughs> i was like yes he's he's already in it true story actually he's dry bones now he's just dead so he's a skeleton oh r.i.p i I thought that was dead yoshi but yeah no super mario i that's oh wait never mind (laughs) disregard that delete that whole can we unclip that entire sentence i just said that was really dumb i was thinking dry bones with somebody else (laughs) and just we're gonna pretend that whole thing didn't happen and hope no one picks up on it um yeah never mind anyway Yeah, it's Mario. N64 is the only one I don't have. Or not the only one, but I have the GameCube and uh, NES. Also... N64 is what I'm missing. But I think it's on the Mar. I'm like pretty sure it's on the Nintendo service, so I could go and play it. It should be if it isn't. We like play it through. need to buy another N64 for the apartment because it broke. It just got old, I guess. I need it for working. Donkey Kong because Nintendo is just refusing to give us Donkey Kong 64, and I'm just upset about yeah, it forever. They've ported Tropical Freeze like seven times, which is like a great game. For and that record, game's like, still $60. Which is insane. Yeah, and that one is... It goes down to like 45 but like that is not nearly cheap enough for how long that game's been it's, out. It's Nintendo, unfortunately. Like it They've just Nintendo. always done that, and I wish that they, they would make a new Donkey Kong game for some reason. Like I mean, I don't know that the Switch would run it, but... Yeah, it's, it's still $55 for a Donkey Kong Trouble Freeze on Switch at Best Buy. <laughs> GameStop has it for $39.99, but that's probably like only if you buy an NFT or something with it, so I don't know. Probably. Um, yeah, so all right, Super Mario 64. Uh, no, nothing super shocking here, but that, like, so far, but that's really kind of like what I expected when I saw the actual games on this list um, as we get through the halfway point here. So, all right, next up. We've got Street Fighter 2, which is regarded as the best Street Fighter game, and Shadow of the Colossus, which is basically a visual novel, in my opinion, with how not a visual mind-numbingly novel. boring it is to play, but it is beautiful. It is boring, but it's not a visual novel. I know. I, it's What I mean by that is, like, that game is so boring. Like, it's beautiful. It's un- It looks incredible. It almost looks like a showcase of, like, what games can do, but, like, look what we did. And I'm specifically talking about the remaster, but, like, even the original looked nice. But God, so yeah, I think the original looked well because I don't know. I forget what what made the original uh, special. I forget. I played the remake though. I also played the remake. Well, I as much as I could. I there's so much of that game just spent roaming around. You just endlessly roaming. Nothing's happening. There's just giants walking around, and you're just like, like I don't know. I I I have friends who love the game, and it's visually beautiful, but it's so slow. I just I didn't get into it honestly. And that was a that was a yeah. day one purchase for me. I bought that literally the day it came out. So the people that like Shadow of the Colossus like like Shadow of the Colossus. Like they fucking like lay their life down for that game. But I'm with you and that I found it very boring. <laughs> I wish I didn't because people like like it. <laughs> yeah. just, it's, it's very bleak. Just like it's a very monotone color palette. And like you said, you literally just like ride around. You use like the light, which is a very cool mechanic to find your next destination and then you gotta like take down that colossus and move on and i just yeah i found it very boring nothing's happening throughout the game like like it's just i want to like i don't mind having patience like i mean i do but like i can deal if the game is gonna reward me but like it's not like 
when you take down a Colossus, you get this like sudden, you know, burst of excitement or something happening. It's just like, okay, like he's down and now you have to go do the same thing again. And it's like you walk through, it feels like almost like a showcase of like what game design can be in terms of the actual appearance of a game and like how it looks. But the, the substance is lacking so much that it just doesn't work in my opinion. Whereas Street Fighter 2 is like, you know, an arcade classic. It's, it's really fun. I mean, if you're not a fighting game fan, you're probably not going to have strong opinions about it one way or another, but it's probably one of the best, if not the best fighters of all time. And, and realistically speaking, it has more going on, I think. Anyway. Yeah, I like playing those games at the arcade, so I'm fine with giving it that one, like giving that one the win. Free play has a, uh, it's like some of the barcades and stuff have some really cool uh, I think there's a Street Fighter one. There's a, another one. I, playing fighting games on an arcade is just a whole different experience. I love button like mashing. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's typically how it ends up. Or if you have like the fight pads, like when I went to PAX in April, they had a room set up with like all the different fighting games and shit, and you could just play. Oh, cool. And there's like the pads. Uh, you just sit down and you just start playing against each other, and it's like fun. Although I'm like terrible with the pad because my brain is like, this is not a controller. What am I doing? Like. Same reason I can't play games with a mouse and keyboard. I just don't, I don't have the, the, the width for it. I know people do, but I can't do it. All right. Next up, then, is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo and Final Fantasy VII. This is, this is Sephiroth's game here, Final Fantasy VII, just so you know. Ah. Uh. <laughs> the game Sephiroth is in. Um, and Super Mario World. You please tell me you've played Super Mario World at least. Nick, oh, come no, on, man! I have not. It, Super Mario World. Is... I don't think I did. I didn't have Nintendo things. I had not PlayStation growing up, so any Nintendo was like stuff I played with other people. Have you never Super Mario it's on World? The Switch. Which one are you? It's Which on... one are you? Oh wait, no, I have played Super okay. Mario. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Even if you're just making it up. The cover... like... No, the cover of that one threw me off. I was like, I did not play that. But no, I, I played this. Okay. I just looked up what, it, what the yeah. game is. It's on Nintendo's virtual console thing on Switch, I think. Oh, like I love cool Super game. Mario World. I'm just an idiot. It's a fun yeah, game. This was a good one. Yeah. Uh, I feel like people are like, this would be like a hard matchup for people, though. I feel like Final Fantasy VII is like really fucking important to people, especially with the remake now. But it's Mario, you know? So the remake, it, well, it's Mar It's the Skyrim argument all over again, except this one actually has validity, I think, because Super Mario World is just a classic in every way. But Final Fantasy VII, which is a game I really want to play, and I've, I've tried to avoid spoilers for, like, most of my life, whether consciously or I, otherwise. Yeah. Same. Because there's obviously, like, significant spoilers about don't that game. tell me i'm not gonna like, tell I've, you I've seen, although when i stuff, when, it's like just gone over my head my friends I don't know spoiled context. it for me because i was watching my roommate play the remake which is probably one of the nicest looking games on ps5 that i've seen at this point like absolutely unreal in terms of how visually nice it is but they're two different games like the remake is drastically different than this one in the sense that, like, some of the story elements are the same, but they added characters, they changed mechanics, like, that guy Sephiroth is in it. Like, there's a whole lot of things that are going on there, whereas this game is kind of, from what I've been told anyway, before playing the remake, you should play the original to really get the experience. Oh, am I going to do that? Probably not, but... It's Maybe nice not, thought. but it is arguably the most significant JRPG of all time, and while I wouldn't put it above Persona... I would definitely say it deserves some uh, respect, and I honestly feel like it would be an auto win in ninety percent of matchups here. But it's Super Mario World. Like Super Mario World is just that, and uh, that came out at the same time as Duck Hunt. No, Duck Hunt was Super Mario Bros, which was the NES one. Super Mario World is just a classic. It's just a borderline. It's That's a it great deserves one. to be vaulted to the top. So I'm going I love with that the style of that one. <laughs> well, you didn't know what it was until like four minutes ago, but. Well, like, that is not, like, that picture is just not a good representation, I don't think. When I looked up, like, what the game actually looked like, like, I was like, oh. Yeah, I, I, I think, I actually played that at Free Play, too. I think they had a machine that had a bunch yeah, of the old like NES games, machine. and you can play it on that, yeah. which was kind of cool. Um, I'm not, like, I haven't played it in a while, but it's a fun game. Uh, so, yeah, Super Mario World. Again, nothing is shocking me here with this. Waiting uh, for a certain game to pop up. We're we're yeah, getting yeah. we're we're almost in the end game here, and we will be doing the other rounds here, which should take a lot less time this time around because I uh, saved everything as what it's named instead of a random number. So all I got to do is oh, pop the sheets go. up and fix them quick. It won't take long. Um, yeah, 
Next up. I don't know what you're waiting for. Now I'm curious. I guess we're going to find out. I just can't wait to shit on it. Okay. Oh, not that one. I hope no oh, one, cli it's still not no, here I hope no yet. one clips oh that out God. of context. Uh, that would be a poor it's clip. still not here. Uh, we've got Batman, Arkham City, and Tetris. Oh, I mean, shout it's, out to Tetris, but I mean, it's Batman. <laughs> it's it's literally not Batman. Tetris. It literally has to be Batman. First of all. Tet it's Tetris. Like, of course, it's a classic, it's, it's a, but like, you really want to play Tetris over Batman? Yes, oh, absolutely. God. Yes. Tetris 99 on the Switch is super fun. That's not Tetris 99. Tetris, I get it. I know how to play Tetris. Like, cool. It's, it's what? I think it's the best selling game of all time. Is yeah, that a thing? It is the best selling game of all time. Yeah. Because it's been, it got ported on every fucking Nokia. Oh, oh yeah. Heaven Nokia. forbid we port a game a lot and call it a success. No, it came. It came pre-installed on some phones. I forget. That's sort of the this, U2 album. This is a game that got re-released more than Skyrim has. All right. Barely, and and in Tetris, it's Tetris. You, like, it is Tetris, but like, why does that get to win just because it has a notable? It doesn't. Name? It gets to win because Arkham City's not even the best Batman game. Arkham Asylum is arguably a much better game. So this like, is. I don't know. Have you played just, Arkham I, City? I think I've. Uh, well. <laughs> I played some of, of one of them. <laughs> Aren't they the same enough? <laughs> I'm waiting for Ashton Kutcher to come out and punk me here. Um, uh, no, they're not the same. They're all. I mean, they play into uh, each other. I, I probably played the good one. I don't know. I haven't. I've watched gameplay of a lot of one of them, and okay. I don't know which one it was. Okay. So. Arkham City has a good review, though. It, what do you mean it's like that bad? It's got a 10 out of 10. I didn't on say Steam, it was bad. I said Metacritic. Arkham Asylum is a better game than two different things. Two 96 different... on Google. Like, I think when you, you can't, like, objectively say these things because people are listening. They're like, oh, like, that's the worst game. No, that's just your opinion that it's the worst Batman. No, it's not. I'm sorry. My friend just texted me saying if Tetris loses, I swear to God, I'm going to come to your house. Um, listen, I. I... <laughs> Tetris, man. Tetris but, is so boring, dude. Yeah, but what is it you just said? Uh, you have to be objective. I think that's just your opinion. Tetris has the best selling. So you, Tet no, you're just saying that, like, oh, that's the worst Batman. Like, no, it, like, okay, but so hold on a reason, second. Hold on a second. Figured it out. It is. It's well. First of all, people voted on this, right? This was fan voting, but also to clarify. It's not even bad. All of the Arkham games are amazing. It's just that Arkham Asylum is the best of the three. Like it, it, it's not a bad thing. But if you we when we had this conversation last week, a uh, last episode, and we talked about some of the games that like we we had to push through because of what they are and what significance they have over time, and how many people still play them, and all the arguments that you use for Ocarina and. Um, Fortnite and stuff that applies to Tetris. Like it's still massively successful and played. I don't even love Tetris. The only time I play Tetris good is if I'm high, and even then, it's probably still terrible. But I feel like Tetris deserves to be in the top sixteen of this side more than That's Arkham City, which is like a good game. But like you know, it's 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 Tetris, Tetris is, is easily the most perfect. perfect game ever created. Zero flaws. I mean, that is true because it is so basic that you literally can't get it wrong. It, exactly. I feel like that's right. Tetris even has a BR, does it really? Is there a Tetris Battle yeah, Royale? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that... Yeah. I, that's what 99 was. You literally mentioned it. I didn't know 99 was a BR. It, you 99 people play at once or whatever, and then you're the best one wins. All right, guys. What do you guys think in chat? What do you think the better game is here? I mean, obviously, like, everyone and their mom knows Tetris, but I don't think that means it's good. I would just much <laughs> rather like play Batman that... over Tetris. So, but, like, objectively, so would I, realistically, but it doesn't mean that Tetris is not a better game, is what I'm saying. Right? I like, mean, if this... I'm just saying, in my opinion, I'd Batman's better. I'd rather play Batman. Have you played Tetris? Have I played Tetris? Of course I played Tetris. Okay, have you played Batman? It's boring. It, it is yeah. boring. Okay, yes, I personally agree with you that after, like, two or three games of Tetris, it does get boring. Yes, I'm not No, like, Tetris is, is fun. It's like, oh, like, I'm sitting waiting for my doctor's appointment. What can I do? You're gonna fucking play Tetris, but, like... <laughs> what is this, 1987 I'd on your, play... your Game Boy I'd... Color? I'd rather play Minesweeper. <laughs> Why? Minesweepers just click and hope to get lucky. No, there's a see. That's what you think, but then you figure out how to play the game, and it's like amazing. 
Tetris is boring, but it can win. Move on. Tetris has to win in this particular case. I guess so. Because you haven't played Batman. That's the main reason. Batman is dead. If you had played Batman and you weren't just like, I love Batman, he's great, and then that was it, and you just didn't like Tetris. You could play Batman in the doctor's office. Batman is dead. Well, that's That's, that's probably true. So so is Batgirl, so um, different thing. All right. That's fine. My opinion on Skyrim. <laughs> That's a. I mean, that is kind of a, a fair. Uh, I'd rather clap play back. Minesweeper than Skyrim. That's. I I yeah, 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 Skyrim yeah. is good. I like Skyrim. I know that there was a mixed reception, but I do think that there uh, is no mixed reception. There is definitely a, yeah no no I, we we're with Tetris here, and the reason is because I'm using your argument against you that you used for me in in the last time about the sales and all of that and accessibility mattering. So Fortnite got to win, then Tetris is winning next. Franken thinks that is a reason Tetris is the best selling game of all time. Yeah, the reason is it's old as fuck and like I said it was installed on all phones for a while. Like But it's come still on. it still sells to this day. The and, original and most Tetris of the people, and no other versions of it. No, no, we're not I mean it's Tetris. Every version of Tetris is just Tetris with fancier clothes on, basically. Like he <laughs> just like buff it up to make it look nice. It's all Tetris. Dr. Mario was kind of fun, but it wasn't really Tetris. Um, I think I want to see the shitty game I want to shit on. Okay, Super Mario Brothers Better... Three, Metal Gear Solid Three, Snake Where Eater. Where is it? Oh Both my two God. absolute so classics, two top of the line games here. I'll get absolutely murdered if I don't pick Metal Gear. Yeah, it's Metal so. Gear. I feel pretty strongly about this one as well because Super Mario Brothers Three, while fun, is not as good as Super Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario World, in my opinion, or Super Mario sixty four. And we've already passed like a bunch of Mario's, and Metal Gear Solid Three is just generally considered one of the best games of all time. And uh, I feel like that's that's pretty standard. So unless you have a strong opinion against it, I think we give that one the dub and then move on to the next. That one. is the dub. Yep. All right, Metal Gear Solid. I should play that. Yeah, I my PS2. I want to play all the Metal Gear Solid games, games, but um, my friend uh, said that they are very stealthy, and like you have to stealth a ton. And I, I am hide in a box. Super impatient when it comes to those types of things. Like I want to run out. Like Resident Evil Seven, I got annoyed by how much you had to like wait around for shit. I was just like, this I don't know. True. I just that's just just me. That's not a fair that criticism awesome of me, a game, though. but I hate it. Well, no, I know that's the that's the problem. <laughs> what are we gonna do when we like, go to play a game or something? It's like oh god. All right, next. Mass Effect 2 and Legend there of Zelda is. Breath of the Wild. There the it is. Skyrim of on. Switch. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to shit on Zelda. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, Zelda's just massively overrated. <laughs> I agree 100%. I know I'm alone. Mm-hmm. I'm, well, I'm like mostly alone in that thought. Breath of the Wild was my first Zelda game, so like I don't have any attachment to Link at all or Zelda. Like I know, I know all of them. I know the deal. I actually know that's a lie. I played Minish Cap, and that was the only one I played before <laughs> Breath of the Wild, which is funny because that is not like even close to the best Zelda game. No, I'm with you. I, I think you're going to be see people agree with you more on this than not. I also agree with you. I have played Breath of the Wild. I couldn't get more than like two hours in. I just it was just boring yeah, to me. And like I played enough of it to know that I was like okay. Like I did some of the dungeons or whatever the fuck they're called. Um... I, like, made it to, like, the snowy area. I talked to the old man, got the glider, like, all that stuff. I really hate games where your weapons break. Like, that was automatically, Mm. like, just, like, a few points taken away. Like, I don't want to have to fucking get new weapons because mine broke. Like, no thank you. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. This is not a fun mechanic to me. Doesn't Skyrim have breakable weapons? No. Your weapons can't wear out in Skyrim? They wear out if for magic uses. But, like, the actual, like, but, like, normal weapons like mm-hmm. swords and bows and fair. stuff they don't break fair enough um yeah, yeah i don't like the stamina thing which i also didn't like about um the guardian game we just talked about that <laughs> pretty trying a blank on the name uh the no i keep wanting to say the last guardian that's a different game shadow of the colossus yes thank you yeah that one also has the stamina thing for climbing i also hate that <laughs> so zelda also does that in this game i do recognize zelda as being like a good game for people that like it like i know why it's appealing and like that's it's cool but yeah no i just i it's not it's not my type of game even though it is it, there's just like so many things that like that they could have done better to get me to want to play and it, they didn't so it's just not i feel like that says more that it is the switch version of skyrim and i didn't like it yeah 
And because I will take any opportunity I can to shit on overrated games, I pulled up some criticisms of Breath of the Wild when I was going through this earlier, uh, which I somewhat agree with, but just some criticisms here for the people that are going to listen to this later and be like, how could they possibly say that? Like, first of all, it's really grindy. It's very much sort of lacking the feel that the other Zelda games have, where it's like, it was almost like, it almost feels like it's, they were like, look at this game we made. We're going to slap Zelda skins on it. Versus, like, making a Zelda game with the spirit of Zelda game. And this quote is perfect. The guy says, Put simply, Breath of the Wild lacks charm, character, personality, and what would really be considered Zelda magic. The story is so light that it might as well not even be there. Sure, not all games need a strong story or lore, like Tetris, arguably the best game of all time, but this isn't Tetris. So I think that sort of sums up my feelings on Breath of the Wild. Mass Effect 2, uh, I've played the first one, I have not played the second one, but uh, from all accounts, it's better than the first one, and I want to play it. Again, I have a laundry list of games that I haven't gotten a chance to play that I really want to play. Um, have you played Mass Effect 2? I haven't. Um, I think I own the remat. Like, what did they just release? They released, like, the collection. Remastered collection, yeah. first yep. three games. Mm-hmm. I think I own that, or maybe it, it's on something. No, it's on Game Pass, right? Uh, that might be what I'm thinking of. I, I think they did put it there, but um, no, Mass Effect's definitely m- way up more in my alley, like people have told me, or like I just know about the style of Mass Effect, obviously not including Andromeda, because I don't think that one did well, but it still seemed fun, like I like the character creator, like if you have a game that's pretty like story heavy, like Fallout, those types of games where you're making like dialogue decisions and also the relationships, yes, you, you've got me sold, so like that's definitely a series I need to get around to. And I think I was going to, but it came out at the same time as something else, so I never like went in to start the like the remastered collection or anything. But yeah, it's look, definitely on my list too. Looks like the legendary edition is what it's called. It came out yeah, last that one. year, um, and I think it's available on Steam, I, which I know you don't have access to. Um, but I think it might also be available on the Epic Games Store. I don't know if that's available mm-hmm. on that and and PlayStation for like twenty three bucks. It's actually on sale right now on PS4 for twenty three ninety nine. So maybe that's what it that's was. Worth. Maybe I went to buy it and then I was like, no, like something else came out and I didn't get around to it. But I know it is definitely a type of game that I would like. Mm-hmm. I, obviously, I think objectively Zelda would go on, but like just mm-hmm. me personally, I'd want Mass Effect to go on, even go though I haven't Mass played it. Here. <laughs> it. The thing about Zelda is just it. Uh, what bothers me so much about this game, even more so, that is like the people that are like, this game is the best game ever. It, It's just the overrating of it takes away from the experience before you even get a chance to play it. So yeah, you go that's into not it even with why this, I like, don't like it, but... super hype. No, well, that, I mean, I, I think like, I didn't like how, I don't, I don't love open world that's like so open world there's not, like, it just, give me a linear, like, like my brain like small focus story. Give me a linear path that I could Tarzan the game and just go through and play. I, I mean, you can go right to the end of Breath of the Wild and beat it in like the first hour. You just yeah. go right to Ganon. But then what's the point? That's like, then the you don't even play the game as intended. You just like went through just to yeah. say you finished it. So like, it, that's, I've literally dislike games that get hyped up to that extent before i play them for that reason with persona 5 being a lone exception because that game before i even played it was hyped up to me by so many people and i played it and i was like holy shit this game actually lives up to the hype like i was waiting for that drop off and it didn't happen but that's rare that does not happen a lot so okay yeah i mean i played it like when it first came out too so i didn't have like people's opinions like influencing mine i just didn't have a good time with it okay Fair enough. Uh, Is that all of them? No, not yet. We got two more. You're up next. I'm just trying to figure out where the game slide went. Uh, Uncharted 2, Among Thieves, and Grand Theft Auto 5. Jesus Christ. That's a good matchup. Um, Yeah, Uncharted 2 is some people's favorite Uncharted, or like most people's. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's mine anymore. But also recency bias. Like, I played all the Uncharted games beginning to end, and I played that one so long ago on PS3 that I honestly couldn't even tell you. I think that one introduces Chloe, which is fantastic, because she's great. Um, But yeah, Grand Theft Auto V has been just fucking wild how long that game's been around, and they're finally working on six, which we knew they were, but... Oh, good, yeah, you got Uncharted games. That's I awesome. have every Yay. Uncharted game on physical, except for the legendary edition well, like, that's like four grand oh. because it came out with a statue and it's wicked expensive um yeah i i my, me personally i liked lost legacy a lot way more than Amazing. i thought i was going to 
Thank um, you. I still don't. That's definitely recency bias, though. Like, that's one scenario we'll say that's recency bias, just because I don't remember how I felt playing one, two, and three. Um, I know I liked four, and I know I felt like four was kind of dragging at some point, just because it's pretty much most of the same stuff. Um, over and over again. They did fix their problems in 4, like in the first few games, you would break into this tomb that hasn't been disturbed for centuries, and then there's fucking people in there somehow already. It's like, where the fuck did they come from? I came in the only en in the only entry, and there's people in here? I always thought that was funny. That didn't, like, ruin the game at all. I just always thought that was a funny thing. That supposedly undisturbed area, and then there's, like, candles lit and people inside already. I just thought that was weird. Any game where there's like like Elden Ring right? like that too. There's just torches that are just lit everywhere and there's no people kind around. Like, like these fucking like, like underworld skeleton. creatures are like in this alternate reality but thankfully they still have fucking lit pathways like it's yeah, one of those things just turn the game off. I like, get Turn your mind off in the game but it's like who's lighting these? Like whose job is it in the fucking purgatory to go through and light every single candle each day because that sounds like a terrible gig. Right, but yeah, then Grand Theft Auto Five. Obviously, people fucking love that game. I loved it. I played the story. Um, I played some of the multiplayer too, but I've only played the multiplayer like in the first like year or so that GTA Five was out. So like, it wasn't nearly as like in depth and like fill, uh, filled out as it is now with all the extra content they've added. Mm -hmm. But I really like the story. Um, GTA as a series is obviously really special to people, and it's. I feel like it. It feels like a niche that like. Not every. I don't know. I just feel like it's, like, its own thing. Like, Grand Theft Auto is Grand Theft Auto. Like, you can compare some stuff to it, like, things with cars and stuff, but Grand Theft Auto, like, just does something different that makes it special. I'll never forget my brother was eight years old. He called my grandma one day because he got a chance uh -huh. playing Grand Theft Auto and he killed a hooker with a chainsaw. And he called her and he's like, Grandma, I just killed a hooker. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, what's going on? And he starts playing cha So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun game uh, with, a, with a fun... Uh, GTA 5, I mean, it's it's not... I think San Andreas is a better game. Uh, I do. And we passed San Andreas. It made it to the final, like, 8 or 16. Um, but, I mean, GTA 5 also doesn't have 32 Game of the Year awards here. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. It's a little blurry. 32 Game of the Year awards in a singular year. Um, yeah, but I'm sure what came out the same year as GTA 5 was probably crazy. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, Uncharted Lost Legacy is amazing. I love all the games, even the first one, for as flawed as it is nowadays. But I played all four straight in a row and then played Lost Legacy, and I still think it's in the top tier of Uncharted games as a whole. Um, but I would go Uncharted 2 here, personally, if that's going to shock anyone based on like the title of the podcast and, and, and my very explicit. So, we got any... Yeah. Right, so. Oh, you want to know why GTA Five didn't win Game of the Year? So your Last of Us came out. Oh, that kind of makes sense because Last of Us. Bioshock is a great Infinite, game as well. Raymond Legends, Metal Gear Rising, Tomb Raider. Yeah, there's there's there was games. Saints Row Four. Thirty. Dead Space Three. Game of the Year. Award. Dead Island Two. Okay, oh well, man. That's a, that's. A, oh no, wait! I didn't yeah. read that right. <laughs> Dead I Island. Dead I'm surprised Island. they made a second one. Uh, yeah, I would say Uncharted is fine. I don't really have, like I said, I if I had played it more recently, I'd have more strong feelings about it. But I, it, like I said, it was so long ago, I don't remember how I felt. And I would say but. the year Uncharted came out, it had to compete against games like Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, Sonic <laughs> and the Black Knight. Uh, oh my god. Arkham Asylum, you know, Borderlands. Borderlands was a great game that came out in that time. Bayonetta. Fucking yeah, all kinds of games that came out. DJ Hero, Scooby-Doo's First Frights. I mean, there's a lot that came out that year, and I think the fact that it powered through says a lot. But yeah, all right, Uncharted 2 does feel like it at least deserved to go to that next round. And I think that might be the last one for the first round, but let's just... Uh... No, there is one more. That's right. This is the last one. Okay. Uh, this is you, if you want to introduce it here. Yeah, we got Metroid Prime, and you just moved it. Yeah. I think it was, yeah, Resident Perfect. Evil 4. Yep. Okay, um, so this was a really tough list for me, and looking at these matchups was tough too, because again, I absolutely adore Resident Evil 4. It is one of the, it, it, it did so much for GameCube as a whole, realistically speaking, like it was one of the, it's, I feel like it's hard to even put into words how much I enjoy that game. Like I streamed it during the pandemic year, two years ago, that was the first time I ever played it, and, uh. And it's, it's, I don't like the tank controls because I just have like a small mind, but like the game itself from start to finish is so 
ridiculous and goofy, but, like, really fun and just perfectly captures, like, what a Resident Evil game should be. Um, and I'm just so excited for the remake. Like, I'm hoping that they don't fuck it. Have you played the Resident Evil 2 remake? Not yet. I need no. to go okay. play those. I forgot there's one that my friend recommended that I need to play that I need to get around to. I just forget which one it is. I would guess it's probably Resident Evil 2 Remake, which came out in 2018, because I know that game is regarded as, like, an absolute gem. I loved it. It was great. But, like, that... They remade 3 a couple of years later. I think that came out in 2020. Um, I liked it, but I know people were underwhelmed by it because it was, like, a four-and-a-half-hour game, so it wasn't anything crazy. But, yeah, I mean, Resident Evil 4 is just top of its class. Metroid Prime is a really solid game, too. Uh, but for me, it's not even close. But by all means, uh, you have the floor. I mean, yeah, I haven't played Metroid Prime, like I said before. I haven't played any of the Metroids. Um, I don't really think I should pick on this one, but if I was picking, I'd say Resident Evil, just because I played 7 and 8. Um, so those are definitely more my style of game. I think even if I played Metroid, I still would end up picking Resident Evil, just because that's the type of game I prefer, and I like the horror genre. And Colroy said RE2 remake was so good. Yeah, I think it's a it's a borderline perfect game. Um, you know, it's not also little surprise that wasn't on this list, but I don't know what happened there. Um I, I think Resident Evil 4 is better, but not by much. Uh and the reason Resident Evil 4 works so well in my opinion is because it is horror for sure, but it's campy. Like it's it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's 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 goofy, but in a way that like like you played seven and eight, like they're very much like especially seven, it's like all horror there's not much comedy or not much like just cheesiness that happens that kind of enhances it but like it's still good uh but i think four hits that pretty well so i'm i'm cool with that being the win if you are yep okay so resident evil 4 takes it oh this is already a hard one this is very... this whole round's gonna be hard except there was only like one that or maybe two that i just had like no say in last time that i didn't really care about or have anything useful to say yeah, if you want to take the lead off on introducing these games for our listening audience. Yep. Yeah, so we are in round two for this side. Um, our first matchup is Persona 5 Royal versus Bloodborne. I mean... I know it's your... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, like, there's no scenario. There's no game. I think Persona 5 Royal is the best game of all time, so there's no scenario in which yeah. any individual matchup is going to change my mind on this. But in the interest of fairness, what I will say is that both games are great, Bloodborne is, is, you know, at the top of its genre. It's a really fun playthrough experience, but it's very hard. It's not super accessible to the general populace. Like, if you're a casual gamer and you want to pick up a game and play, Bloodborne is not super inviting for you, whereas Royal kind of appeals to everyone. Like, if you're at all into that kind of thing, and even if you're not, you may find the game fun because of some of what it does that a lot of other JRPGs don't in terms of character building and the actual gameplay elements and stuff. Um, so if you want an argument for it, what I would say is that while both are good in terms of accessibility, Royal is just more widespread, whereas Bloodborne is going to be a more niche audience that's going to be more skilled with that type of game due to its you know barrier for entry. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you Persona 5 Royal. I mean, it's your game of all, like, your most favorite game. <laughs> And, like, I felt the same way when I was arguing for Skyrim. Um, like I said, Bloodborne's on my list of games to play, and it did really well. Um, the year it came out, like I said, it was nominated for Game of the Year. Like, people fucking love that game, mm -hmm. and for good reason. Um, it and playing awesome. both, yeah. Playing both, I'd probably end up picking Persona, just because that's more my style of game. Um, like, one of these has to win, which is unfortunate, because Bloodborne <laughs> yep. would also go really far in a bracket, but oh, I think, geez. yeah, just for us picking, it would definitely be Persona. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm on the boat with you. I think, I think, I my honest opinion is that anyone who would pick otherwise either doesn't like JRPGs in any capacity and just isn't into that type of game, which means Persona wouldn't appeal to them, or they just... Or the played it. time scares them off because I'm very scared that it's like a hundred plus hour game, but you know, you're, sometimes you just gotta do it. <laughs> you're absolutely right, and I think we're super alike in that regard because a lot of times when I go to start a game, I'm like, how long is this? Like, oh like, yeah, how I long is this game gonna be? Because it. I'm like, do I really want to? Like, how much time have I put into this? Can I put this into something else? My friends criticize me for it all the time. It's like, don't worry, just play the game. And I'm like, well, no, because it's like eighty hours long, and I don't want to spend that much time on one single game. Like. Like, I don't, you know, it's, it's, I can't, like, I, but, but Persona, 
never felt long. Like, I think I, I, I would get off work. Like, I was right at the start of the pandemic and I was playing that. And I would get off work and I'd be like, I just want to go play Persona. I'd sit on the couch for like four hours and just play. Because I was so immersed in the game and like wanting to play. And even when I got to the end and I was like, all right, I'm pretty pumped to be finishing this up like this a lot of time. I was still sort of sad because I'm never going to be able to experience that game again for the first time. So like, I'm going to live vicariously through you when you play it, like to see somebody else experience it the first time. It was Metal Gear right. 3. Yeah, it was Metal Gear Solid 3. Is Stranded Snake named after, is, is the nickname yeah. playing it? Okay, yeah. It's it's like Death Stranding and uh, no, Solid that's Snake. That's actually, the snake. that's fair. Death Stranding I've never played, but I know a lot of people like that one. Okay, Persona takes it here, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty justified, but it's not an indictment on either game. This one, we've got Super Smash Brothers versus Super Metroid. Yeah, so uh, like I said in the first round, I haven't played any of the Metroid games. I know what they are. Um, it's definitely Smash Bros. for me. Just hands down. It's just a, I, Even playing Metroid now, Smash is going to be a more fun experience. And there's more, I don't know, I feel like there's more variety in that type of game. And you have a lot of fun on your own. You have a lot of fun with friends. Like with friends makes it a whole different game. Online, the competitive scene is a whole different game. And then I'm pretty sure there's, like... Oh, actually, no, I did play that. There's, like, that weird story mode where you can, like, go through and, like, challenge people and, like, murder them and, or I guess, free them from their trophy prison. So that's, like, an interesting game mode, too. Obviously, people don't really play it for that. But it's an option if you care for it. So, yeah, I definitely think it's Smash. We we stand the option to murder. I mean, of course, you did say you like Super Mario 64 because you could throw penguins off a cliff. So, like, it's yeah, some I mean, questions going great. on there. Um, uh, But I'm with you. I think... Both games, the argument I would use for Super Metroid is that it defined the Metroidvania genre to an extent, but the argument I would use for Super Smash Brothers is it literally defined the Super Smash Brothers genre. Like, you play a game like Multiverses, which just came out recently, and when I was playing that, I'm like, this is cool, but I'm like, I'd just rather play Smash, like, if I'm gonna play something. Like, I'm not, Smash kind of burned out on me, sort of like what you said, um happened with Apex, where you've just played it for so long, and it's like, not a bad game, it's not an indictment on the game, it's just after a while, like, how many times can you play it? Otherwise, like, picking up, play a game of Smash with friends when they come over or whatever, but I'm not going to sit there and just play it endlessly. Um, but it's still Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. They perfected the, the game, pretty much. And it, I agree with you. I think that has to be it. I was trying to think that Persona and Breath of the Wild are the two games I want to play and beat so bad but can't get through them. Uh, have you played Persona yet? Like, Or, like, have you started it at all? I'm just curious. That's what the comment says, that they seems like they started it. that's what i thought too but i wasn't sure and the only reason it i asked felt, like, is caught. there is a log of i mean a, a section of persona 5 that is like an hour and a half that is kind of tough to get through because it is slow-ish but it it does the thing that a lot of the other persona games don't in the sense that it starts you off like right off the bat with a really cool like it takes you right into the moment so it eases you into that like slowness and then it kind of picks up after that but it's it's just I oh just, <laughs> I love that. Fifteen hours. Fifteen in hours in. Considered a okay. lot. It's are Persona. You, are you playing Persona Five Standard or Royal? And the reason I ask is because Royal upgraded a lot in terms of like the battle system and the. the yeah. Once I heard that player. Royal was like better in every way, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm definitely just playing that one. Yeah, I I recommend that, and I'm sure Five is its own experience. But given my lack of like enjoying slowness with certain things, I I think royal was the better way to go um i mean there's there's puzzles there's other cool stuff that kind of goes in there so all right smash wins super smash yeah. brothers wins i think we're pretty no disrespect cole roy says i got three hours in and couldn't do it i uh i implore it's you to give it for everyone you gotta know that no i it's do and i said that to you type of game. this this game this particular um this particular matchup is going to rip my heart out a little bit because I don't want to pick between these two games. Oh, Lord. Um, so the one thing I will say before I introduce this is Sanders said, uh, but maybe I should try Royal. If you don't like it or you can't get through it, I wouldn't critique you for it because like Nicole said, it's not for everyone. Um, I am not a huge JRPG fan. Like I like the genre, but I wouldn't just sit down and play any game just because that's what it is. Persona hit a different note for me because like I like some animes. I like that anime style approach, but it's really just like the characters and sort of the way that they pull the whole game together and just kind of make you care. Plus like Morgana's awesome. So like there's that, but I recommend Royal. It's definitely faster paced and more accessible than five in the sense that it changes a lot. So it's definitely a recommendation on my part. But you don't like it, you don't like it. At least you gave it a try, and that's really all you can say. Um, although three hours in on Persona Five, 
isn't going to get you anywhere near the good parts. I could understand why if you only played three hours, you'd probably feel that way. Um, okay. I think this one's my intro. And oh, you can go. yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, so we got The Last of Us and then Hades. I'm good. Can someone else just pick for me on this? I don't want to do it. I feel like I'm betraying You can someone. just flip a coin. I don't want to betray someone. Listen, it's hard to pick. I... They're both such great games. I hate this matchup. Um, I feel like The Last of Us is... The Last of Us is incredible. But Hades is just so good. <laughs> it's I... kind of crazy that you've, you've beat... And I think that means a lot, too, because, like, I played Hades, and I know it's great, but you, like, actually beat Hades and did, like, all the endings. So yeah. I feel like you, you actually can have a, like, huge decision because you've played both of these to the actual end. Yeah, and I hate the idea of picking between them because both of them are just 10 out of 10 games. I mean, there's barely any... I couldn't... Compl My only complaint about Hades was I wanted more. Like, I wanted a sequel or something, but Super Giant doesn't make sequels, so there's no... They don't... They just make games that incorporate elements from previous games, but I love the Greek mythology element of it and, like, giving those characters personality and, like, everything about Hades. I, I have to pick Hades on this, honestly. Ooh. That's, that's my pick. I certainly... Whatever... That's where I'm going with this. Having played both, finished both, I, I, it all comes down to if you were like, go play one of these right now. I'm gonna go play. I want to go play Hades. Like that's the one that I would want to pick up and play. So, yeah, I would agree with that. If someone's like, go play this right now, I'd want to play Hades just because I feel like that's an easier game to pick up. Just like in the way the game's designed, it's literally made to be played in like loops, mm -hmm. like sessions, just because it's. <laughs> You're going to die and restart anyway. But The Last of Us, I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I didn't finish Hades, but, like, I uh, you can play. As long as you, I, I, got, I got through the first two bosses and died on the third. So, like, I played a good part, like, a good chunk of that game. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I'm honestly <laughs> wicked torn on this one, though, because, like, it's The Last of Us. You can we just you pass know? both of them? Last but that's happened to me. So that happened to me the first time. You know, I told you I played The Last of Us, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it the first time I played, and then I ended up going back and like loving it. Mm -hmm. Hades. I did the same thing. I played some of it on Switch and didn't get that far. I probably died in like Rage Quit or something. <laughs> and then I played it again on Game Pass and had went like got further with it. And then something like distracted me. Not that I stopped playing because it was bad. Um, something definitely just like took my mind off of it. I don't know. It's hard. I really like. <laughs> I like my gut. My gut says The Last of Us, but then we're just torn. So I'm looking at the comments, and Stranded Snake said Last of Us all day. If someone said, "Why do you love video games?" I'm pointing them to The Last of Us. That's a very that is true true statement. I feel that way about Persona for sure. Um, but I also feel that way about Last of Us and Hades for different reasons. Like Last of Us is an emotional journey that everyone should experience at some capacity because it's just like crazy definition of what. Like people are like, how can you sit there and play a video game? Or like we play video game. Like that video game is Last of Us is more of an emotional journey than half the shit people are ever gonna watch on TV in their lifetimes. And in that medium, using the video games as a medium to tell that story is just oh, so yeah. one of my favorite ways to like consume stories. And like it's not for everybody, but like video games, like I feel like it's always a little bit deeper because like you're part of the story. <laughs> like you're making like your actions and like choices are making those. That like making the story happen, so do you just feel like um, you feel like more connected on a personal level to it? Yeah. I don't know. I definitely still go to The Last of Us, just like um, trying to stick, make a good point. Like, why do you love video games? I'm pointing them to The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. The Last of Us is like my ideal game, not in like that specific like subject, like not zombies and stuff, but like the like you have like a perfect perfect story like beginning to end and it's like a very like linear experience obviously like it's still like open well maybe not in that one like last of us 2 gives you like a little baby open section yeah but yeah like my like favorite games even though my favorite games like a giant open world rpg but like my favorite <laughs> games to play besides that are just like those like they can be short they can be longer whatever but just like like a very good story and like doing whatever it takes to like be able to tell that story and i think last of us does theirs in a very good way I don't know how we're going to pick that one, because I guess we're definitely just, like, split. I mean, two people said The Last of Us. 
I'll go last of us here to avoid a tie breaker holding this up. I think either way, you're making a good pick. It doesn't really matter. In an ideal yeah. world, both of these games are in the top four of this bracket. And had the because I'm looking at the rest of the list, and there's no other game on this list that I would have picked over Hades, like with what we have left if that was the one on one matchup. So Yeah, I, Hades I, is a lot of fun and it's funny, and then you got the last of us that's like a very good story and mm -hmm. like emotional and like dark, gritty, you know. It's like two very different vibes and different game styles but yeah i like that hades has a story of its own too in a way and like obviously it's not like as in depth or complex but like you get little bits and pieces of information as you play through the game and you kind of piece things together and that's kind of a cool approach for a rogue like you know playing something like binding of isaac or a different game which is like fun but it doesn't it doesn't get you there i don't think in the same way but i'm gonna go last of us just to just to give us the ability to move forward with this bracket and uh i don't think either one is really a a bad call uh, but it does break my heart a little bit to see hades go as hot as he is so um <laughs> next up is animal crossing new horizons versus rise of the tomb raider this is literally like not a question i told you how i felt about tomb raider <laughs> maybe if i go back and play it'll be better but like it's animal crossing like it is it's the switch's second best selling game of all time behind what Still, tetris no, behind oh. Mario Kart 8. Oh, okay. It's actually above Breath of the Wild, but I didn't need to bring that fact out because they didn't get paired up against each other. But <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's Animal Crossing. I don't know what to tell you. It just is. I mean, I agree with you on this too, but we not because I it, but... not because I love Animal Crossing or have some a passion towards Tomb Raider one way or another. I just think Animal Crossing's significance can't be understated. They luck not lucked out, but like that game coming out when it did caused it to have such a bigger impact on gaming as a whole in that time period i think if it had come out and the pandemic wasn't happening it would have still been very successful but would it have been the the massive smash hit that it was i don't necessarily think so and i think that's just because they they struck gold and kind of got there at the right time and i just think weighing the two against each other i new horizons does feel like it would be uh Tomb Raider, and it's gonna get killed by The Last of Us on the next round. So, like, we need to give it a little bit of a mid thirty dance. So, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good with that one. Okay. Strand and Sake said Tomb Raider is great, but Animal Crossing was like a moment in time, yeah. like a long moment in time too. It was because it was using a real time clock, like for the entirety of like that eight month window where like there was non essential businesses closed and most people had to actually stay home, like Animal Crossing. So, like, there was always something to look forward to in your day-to-day, -day, which was, like, very welcomed when you had to be stuck inside. That's true, especially when you live with my roommate's ex. Uh, anyway, moving on to the next one, um, we've got, uh, we've got, Ellie's, Ellie's about to shank Tom Nook. Yeah, probably. Uh, this is you. Sorry for the intro. Uh, we got Super Mario 64 and Street Fighter 2. I mean... I love Street Fighter 2. It's fun. It's a great arcade game, but it's not Super Mario 64. It, it, I mean, we're getting to a point now, and I, I hate that argument. Like, well, it's such and such a title, and I don't think it's a valid argument in most cases, but Super Mario 64 I mean, it, still holds whatever up. whatever one you like more. Yeah, and I think this is pretty easy for me simply because we're talking best of all time. Like, there's still new Street Fighters coming out. Street Fighter Five is a great game. Like it's really fun. It's yeah, a really but this well is number game. two. No, no, I, I, I know. So what, what I'm saying is Street Fighter's showing it can still evolve. It's still develop. Super Mario 64 still holds up as a good game. Like it's not. It doesn't. It's not the most. It's a classic. Yeah, exactly. It's one like, of those though. It's not one where you go back and it's so old. You're like, oh, I can't play it. It's like, oh, like this is fucking great. This is a classic. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent because most N64 games nowadays. Sorry if I'm gonna trigger anyone. Kind of blow. Like they were great when they came out, but they do not hold up well. And this is not one of those games. This game still holds up extremely well, uh, unlike Ocarina. And it's just a really fun. Uh, it's a really fun game. So I'm gonna go Super Mario 64 here if you're good with that. Yeah, I like I said I've played Street Fighter like at an arcade or something, but mm -hmm. sixty four is definitely more fun for me. All right, well here comes the uh, I'm here scared. comes the I one I've been it dreading a little bit: Super Mario World versus. Wait a minute. Yes, Super Mario World versus Mass Effect Two. This is a weird matchup. Yep. This is a very weird matchup. Um. So yeah, I said in the first round I never played Mass Effect Two. Um. I have played Super Mario World. 
It's interesting, because like I said, if I played Mass Effect, I feel like I would say Mass Effect, just because like, that's my type of game like all day. Mm-hmm. And I just haven't got around to playing the Legendary Edition at all. But like... I don't. I feel like weird saying Super Mario should win, but I think it should. Just because like I haven't played Mass Effect, so I really don't have anything to say about it. But if you've played both, then I have not. Maybe played what Mass you gotta Effect say too. is more important. I've played Super Mario World uh, many times. I have not played Mass Effect Two. I've played Mass Effect One, um, which was good, and I didn't finish it. So I want to finish it, but I haven't. Uh, I I also lean Super Mario World here, which may be just like some type of I, it's hard to say but i think because I, I don't know how to materialize what i'm saying but super mario world is just a classic like it's still again the same type of thing that works super mario 64 you could still go play super mario world today and it's still fun like it's still good so that's that's where my are these mario uh twitch chat emojis or something is that a thing oh it Polaroid is. It's just said Ma- behind a door I did not it's know. yoshi eating i don't know what he's eating and then it's a thwomp <laughs> guy Yes, that's kind of really cool, actually. I don't like Boo staring at me that way, but that's fine. <laughs> a little unsettled by it. It's Boo waiting to see how the next matchup's going to go. All right, Super Mario 64 it is. Uh, no disrespect, of course, to a Mass Effect, which is a great title, I'm sure. This bracket uh, just makes me realize like how many games are in my backlog still. Me too. And so we've got Metal Gear Solid 3 versus Tetris. And I think You're not allowed you're not allowed to let Tetris win. You're not allowed to do it. I might have accidentally swapped the pictures for those last two brackets, and it might have supposed to be Super That's Mario okay. World versus Tetris. But we're gonna keep it because we're doing this live. It's it is gonna it is. end up the same. Yeah, anyway. it's not gonna matter. I think Tetris is pretty much a lock here. Um... No. <laughs> oh god. I refuse I, to let I, Tetris get I, any further. I half joke. Um are you saying we've we've Tetris out? We're we're at the block. Um, what a thrill! Yeah, so exciting Tetris that game. Like I feel like you have like an issue with Tetris. I feel like we're ready to have oh. like a Tetris therapy session here at some point where you just tell us where Tetris hurt you because I feel like you <laughs> you just hate it for reasons I don't understand. I can't put the blocks together to figure out why, but you seem to hate it. But please, this Hilarious. is your this is I agree. Thank you. This is your um. You're around here to start us off, so please. No, I, I said it the last round. It's just like, it's Tetris. Yes, it's obviously <laughs> iconic. It's the best-selling game of all time for reasons that it doesn't deserve, just because it was pre-installed on phones. It's it's Tetris. Everyone knows Tetris. It has a very specific game. It has very specific rules, and it just is, and it works. Awesome. Cool. It's boring. I don't know, like, there's no other way for me to say it. Like, I'll play it every now and again. Not even every now and again. I played when 99 came out. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yep, it's still Tetris. Literally doesn't change. It's just so boring. I guarantee <laughs> any Metal Gear game, even though, like, is there a bad one? I'm pretty sure it's a bad uh, one. It's going to be more entertaining than yeah. this than Tetris. I don't think Tetris is bad. I think it just is what it is, and it's boring. I just, I'm already envisioning in my head when I'm, like, doing the editing for this post-show, and I clip you're talking about Skyrim from the first video and you talk about Tetris here and how you use the same argument for Skyrim that you're using against Tetris and we're just going to put them side by side in a video and just... No, they're just different because Skyrim isn't boring. But, yes, Skyrim but, does... <laughs> this is my point. And I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I feel like you can't use the same argument against a game that you're using for a game to say... But cause... I can because if it works in its favor, in Tetris's case, it doesn't work in its favor. It, it absolutely does! Why reinvent what's not broken? Because when you play Tetris, literally nothing changes. Okay, yeah, your blocks are changing, but, like, ugh, it's too simple. There's literally there's nothing complex about Tetris. It just is what it is. Okay. It's Tetris. Okay. Like, can, can anyone say they don't like it? Yeah, sure, they can say they don't like it because it's pointless. You hate it. Was it was a fun game I think for, Tetris, like, time. Like, Tetris, like, broke into your house when you were a kid and, like, stole all your stuff or something. Did you get Tetris on yeah. a... Did you get Tetris for Christmas when you were younger and that's all you got and you were expecting, like, a puppy or something and you're just no. like disappointed you like went to bed i've honestly had... never even had i don't think i've ever talked about my feelings about tetris till tonight and i just yeah I just, tetris it moment. doesn't belong as w- beating these other games that are so much better experiences who yeah, plays tetris, tetris a... for the first time and goes wow this is a game i love like a what? small no. child in 1982 probably playing yeah. tetris for the first time if we had been tetris alive back great, then yes this isn't Tetris Effect. This is like general Tetris. Tetris Effect and is like, cool. <laughs> still, it's still not as... It's still not as Stranded fun. Snakes says, where's my Tetris open world RPG? 
That'd be pretty fun, actually. Yeah, can I be can I be a Tetris block? I want give me the story about the sad Tetris block that doesn't get used. Yeah, it now just I'll wanted to that. be loved, and then it ran into Nicole, and she just shat on it for some reason. Just hates Tetris for so. I don't understand the way you feel about me Tetris. Live action Tetris. I want the blocks played by uh, Chris Pratt. I no, he's a cool guy. Chris Pratt is. He's gonna play Mario in a new movie somehow. I'm still not sure how that's gonna that work. Movie. I don't know how that's gonna work. I'm that's all right. Listen, I'm gonna give you Metal Gear. Metal Gear. We're gonna, but just because you're being a listen, I watched queen. Stranded Snake play like one of the Metal Gears, and like you got to hide in a box, and I was sold. I was like, that's all I need to see. You get to hide in a box in Tetris. You could hide your block in between other blocks and make a box. It's a bad argument. Anyway, uh, I feel like you're being a drama queen about Tetris, so we're gonna give you that one, and we're gonna go on to the next one. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I'm kidding, of course, uh, but not entirely. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, next final final round bracket have round. I hate this too. I don't want to do this. That's it's a tough one. it is Uncharted two versus Resident Evil four. And Alter Joker said there is supposed to be a Tetris movie coming out. I hear that's going to be a real blockbuster. <laughs> but, okay. I actually know my my noise suppression probably. Yeah, it didn't pick up. It didn't pick up Blockbuster. That's funny. I'm gonna add a sound effect for that when I make the video. Um, <laughs> Uncharted Two, Resi Four. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I guess I never played Resident Evil Four. I played Uncharted Two. Uh, way too long ago to remember how I felt about it. I'd probably pick Uncharted Two. I guess just because I I played that one. But you've played both, so maybe you have a better opinion about it. Yeah. Again, this breaks my heart a little bit. But I think I gotta go Resi 4 here. As much as I love Uncharted, Resident Evil 4 is just such a great, great game. And while Uncharted 2 is, in my opinion, it's my favorite Uncharted. 4 is the best, I think. Even though 4 got a little slow towards the end, but like it's still the best. And and I'd argue that Lost Legacy is is right up there too. Um But 2 is definitely my favorite. And the first one I played where I was like, holy shit, like I love these characters. But Resident Evil 4 is just it's just Resident. It's it's game defining. It's it's great. It's. Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll gladly give it to Resident Evil. Yeah. I just have no eggs in that in that one. I I think Resident Evil Four here makes sense, uh, for sure. So I'm gonna go that way. I'm just you surprised have... you're letting Uncharted Two die, but go ahead. It, it, it's it's not like I'm letting it die, but I'm 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 thinking. That's Nate right there grabbing your hand, and you're gonna let go. Yeah, that's that's like a Tetris block dying, killing it on for day. Imagine a kid that likes Tetris like falls off a cliff, and you're like, I would save you, but today no, and you just let him die because he likes Tetris. And you're like, it's boring. Meh. I feel like you're disrespecting the great game of Tetris, but we'll discuss that at a later date. Um, I'm sad to do this, but yeah, Resident Evil 4. I'm going to go Resident Evil 4 here. I, I just sure that's the Uncharted, one I've been recommended to play. Uncharted 2 is my favorite, but it's not the best. Play and, Lost uh, Legacy. Lost Legacy is amazing. Um, who said Lost Legacy? Yeah, Lost Legacy is great. Definitely should play it, but play 4 first because, well, play well, yeah, all of them, realistically. Order. Play them in order. You can skip one if you want. I like it. I, I, but like, you can see how far the, they've come. The problem with one is that it's got like a terrible combat system that just doesn't hold up well, but I would play them all if you have the time. It's really fun. And the story, if, if you don't play one, definitely watch like an introspective or something on YouTube of the story because the story of Uncharted is fucking fun. Like that's half the, half the appeal. Um, okay. Uh, so we're going to do, I'm just going to do this quick. This shouldn't take more than 10 seconds. So I'm going to just real quick here, set us up for the the finale here uh, i'm gonna just mute these real quick so nicole you can tell everyone how much you hate tetris or something while we're while we're doing this if you you said mute these or mute us i'm not muting anything i'm just turning oh, off okay, the, yeah. we're, i mean it's gonna take me 10 seconds to do this so i'm really not that yeah. worried about the time on that well, fun fact i um i'm, I'm wearing my groot shirt today because the groot series comes out my shirt says i am groot wait it's quite an ugly groot though the groot series comes out when today oh that's why i'm wearing my shirt yeah they did like a five like episode series maybe or maybe five or six episodes but they're just like little animated shorts of baby groot so like it's like the best thing they could have done just like a few quick episodes for groot is it canon yeah is it interesting? i think everything is except for what if i read something that groot oh maybe he's not no i'm sure he's... i'm sure it's canon i don't know i'm wearing the uh the sweet uncharted horizons uh it shirt is a cool here, shirt. one of a kind. It does look more like a compass in person than Ooh. it did on the thing you sent me. This shirt is really comfy, and yeah. uh, 
I was looking at. I was like, I want to make a piece of merch just to see how that site works and see how it looks. And if we ever were to get to a point where people were like, hey, we'd rep you guys. Definitely a pretty cool design to start, but like, it's really comfy. I like it. Anyway, I get distracted because I have. Yeah, I'm just waiting till you get like sued for using the Uncharted font. So I, someone actually tweeted at me, uh, tweeted at, at us on the account on the the Twitter account. If you guys don't follow us, you can follow us at UNCH Podcast on Twitter. By the way, it's like a joint account, so like we'll both be able to see everything. But someone tweeted at me on there. I'd actually said something like, I really like that shirt. Like, you should make those. And I was like, I don't think we could do that anyway because I'm fairly certain it's... The font itself is not copyrighted for the record. It is a full free-use font. Good. But because of the way that it's... um, Because of the fact that it's it's used in that way, I feel like it would be pretty Maybe. hard. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not either. I wish I was. Call, uh, Matt Murdock. Oh... That's exciting. I can't wait for that show either. All right, that's ANCH. That's Mario World. Beautiful. I think we are golden. Speed round. Yeah, that was pretty quick. That was pretty straightforward. Persona 5 Royal, Mario 64. Oh, I fucked up on one thing. That's all. No, gotta... this one I feel like just like... This is... We've talked so long about it. I'm so mad that our audio got cut out for like the first one because we are... <sighs> Yep. I'm so mad. <laughs> the whole Bloodborne and Dark Souls talk, I was Which like, I liked ready a lot. for that one. And I, can, I feel like we could talk about that a lot more, too, in a future video. Um, oh, what a fun matchup. Yeah, so here we go. Final eight. We're gonna we're not going to do the winners tonight, so we're going to get this down to two, and then we're going to leave that with the other two. And then in our next video, uh, which we don't have a date for yet, but like if you're following us on any of the socials, we tweet that stuff out constantly so you can make sure it'll probably be a weekend night like a friday night or something because i think it's probably like a decent amount of people um we're gonna do the final four and then cult of the lamb comes out tomorrow so i don't know if anyone else is excited for that like i am but we're gonna like give our thoughts on that and i guess see whatever other topics come to light at that point so yeah definitely let's get the final two and uh and yeah set the stage for the finale so persona 5 royal super smash Brothers ultimate two great games um we can give it to persona okay I know you want to. I, and like, I, I do. Smash, Smash is good. You want to know a crazy fact real quick, though? I of looked course. up the best-selling like Switch fact. titles in yeah. case I needed them for fighting for Animal Crossing. Switch, uh, Switch. Super Smash Bros. is the third best-selling with 28 million. There's, like, a giant gap. The second place is uh, Animal Crossing with 39. So it's, like, 11 million more, which I feel like is a lot. That is list. actually kind know. of a crazy... Um discrepancy but it doesn't shock me entirely yeah but like animal crossing is like i mean it's a multiplayer game but it's very much play on your own type of game but then like smash bros i feel like everyone bought to play that and it was just crazy that it still hasn't like outsold animal crossing i don't know but... i think the pandemic helped with that oh uh, next round oh <laughs> it's the last of us last uh so just to put that it's last of us versus animal crossing right. in this round um yeah, I, it's The Last of Us, right? Like, all the arguments we just stated about Last of Us and why we'd tell anyone we play video games with or whatever, what we play, and why we play it, that's that's what we've got there. So, yeah, I'm um, with you on that, too. Okay, we don't need to t spend any more time on that one. Last of Us wins against Animal Crossing. Super Mario 64 versus uh, Super Mario World. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Oh, no. Oh. Damn. It's tough. The pause of us just like debating. Um, see, I, I feel like my initial reaction was 64, but then I like thought about it and I kind of feel like Super Mario World was like a more complete game. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, I think Super Mario World is just a little bit better. That's 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 where I was leaning. Like Super Mario sixty four, I feel like it's a very different experience. But I feel like if I was like, oh, I want to pick up a game and start playing Mario, I would like, like I do want to play sixty four. But like I feel like Super Mario World is like the typical Mario experience back then. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd say Super Mario World if that's where you were leaning to. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way with you. And uh, for the last, I wonder how far these two games made it on their official bracket. We'll have to look at that. Well, we can talk about that in the next one too when we recap like where things would have performed. So the last one then, uh, Metal Gear Solid Three versus Resident Evil Four. I got nothing to say. I would say Resident Evil. I think because I've seen like the, or like I know what like the two type of games are about, and I feel like I'd probably 
prefer Resident Evil 4, but I honestly don't know. I mean, I just think Resident Evil 4 is just fantastic in every way. And not that Metal Gear Solid 3 isn't. Um, and again, this is one of the slight things that comes along with doing an opinion piece is like there's going to be that sort of skewing where it's like, well, we haven't really played a ton of Metal Gear Solid 3, so we're relying on like accounts of our friends who have and who have nothing good things to say about it and, and all of that. But like when it comes down to it and like I got to make that choice, I feel like Resident Evil 4 is the stronger game, uh, personally speaking. But I would, I would humor the other one i'm gonna hey, I'm, I, I'm good with resident evil all right so maybe with the other people they would have picked that but okay well in that case then that just leaves us with the final two uh final four rather sorry forgive me um which is i'm just gonna set this bracket up super quick because we're we went a lot longer than i had anticipated initially yeah. which is great because like we had a lot of conversation but i didn't realize what time it actually was time, it's two hours and 13 minutes i think last time we were like right at two hours which is quite long i think future episodes will try to probably make shorter yeah i think this the, this, this was like a very long topic to get through to break through yeah imagine we, we initially discussed doing this all in one sitting and that would have never worked oh. um imagine, I probably, just fucking like yeah, take ahead of time yeah it wouldn't work i yeah, you have I'm persona really... and resident evil up i don't yeah. know if that's what you No, intended. it's it's not but i at this point i was just sort of like all right so these are the two matchups that we have for the final four um just setting the stage here uh we've got resident evil 4 versus super mario world Huh. These are very different games. They are very different games, and all of these are deserving in being in the final four, and overall the final eight, if you, you know. I'm just very confused how this became the final four, <laughs> honestly. It, I know why Persona's here, but these two, that that's interesting to me, since I don't have strong feelings about either of these games. <laughs> it may have been a matchup thing, and, and just... It probably late. was a matchup thing, yeah, a lot of good games. This whole, this whole bracket was honestly a bunch of yep, good games. I agree. Well, that's like the whole point of it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. These are both great. Uh, I'm going to go Resident Evil 4, and the only reason I'm personally picking that one is because at this point we're pushing, you know, like it, it's it's on a roll Opinion. at the moment, and I feel like it's like, it just feels like the strong performance here to, you know, have as a Final Four candidate, but Mario World's great too. I mean, what do you, you have a, do you have a preference one way or another? I don't. I, like I said, I, I, I'll get around to playing RE4 because I think that's the one that's been recommended to me as far as like one of the uh, what are the old ones I should play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd rather play Resident Evil 4, like a game like that, than Mario. Like I said, Mario is obviously a lot of fun and like you can pick that up and play it any day. But I think Resident Evil is like the t more of the experience I'd want to play. OK, all right. So that leaves us to the other final round here, which is a, a, again, everything here is deserving to be here. Um, Persona 5 Royal versus The Last of Us. That is a fun one. You're going to say Persona, but, like, I obviously can't say Persona because I haven't played it. <laughs> this is true. Oh, gosh. I wish uh, yeah, that yeah, you'd yeah. be able I to get a couple of hours in on Persona so that you could start to formulate an opinion listen. on it before our final listen. head to head I'm here. I'm so busy. I um, feel you. I feel I obviously want to say The Last of Us, do, but like, do you like, do you objectively like? Obviously, this doesn't have to be your choice. Do you objectively think that Persona is better than The Last of Us as a game or as an experience? Experience. Yes. Um. I mean, obviously. Wait. Wait. Which one was yes? You think that <laughs> Persona is better as an experience? Yes, because Persona. I'm sorry. As a game. Complete yeah. game, I think Persona 5 Royal is better. As an experience, I think The Last of Us is better because it's telling you that That's story fair. and it's taking you through that journey. But The Last of Us is a great story. Persona 5 feels like a great game, and the hashtag is best game of all time. So I have ah. to lean game <laughs> over experience whilst very much stating that Last of Us deserves to be here like as if persona is one on this side last of us is like 1.01 like it's right there you know and it doesn't even feel like i'm i'm shitting on one to pick this over the other but i'm gonna lean persona 
I'd like to think that objectively you would lean that way once you've had a chance to play the games, but of course yeah, we'll have to it, so. we'll talk about it once I play Persona. What I would have changed my mind to. Would I'll you? give you Persona. All right. I feel like me... because we pushed Skyrim through, that is sort yeah, of... we push. Sky... Well, Skyrim deserves it, but I also you have the same energy about Persona, which is how I know it's probably belongs here. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to leave that's us with Persona thing. getting the win, and we're not doing this anything else with this today, so we're set up for the final four. Resident Evil, Persona 5, Royal, and then God of War, and uh, Skyrim, which is an insane final four that I don't know that I would have projected exactly the way it was. I never would have guessed Resident Evil it, 4 is in the I'm final not four. shocked by it, but as we kind of went along, it did sort of feel like it was just the arguments I made, more arguments I made in favor of it, the more I was like, yeah, this game really does deserve to be in that conversation, and you could obviously look at stuff like Metal Gear and other stuff and say it deserves to be there too, but I think... Um, I think this is a pretty good... It sets the stage for a... I say we, we can definitely do some, like, research on these games, make sure we're, like, fully prepared to, like, come and talk about why we're against or in favor of whatever the last four are that we have. And realistically, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it ends up and whether or not we're able to definitively get one way or another. So that's oh, it for Lord. me. It's your channel. I'll let you wrap it up and everything else. But thanks to everyone who tuned in and watched um our socials are on the screen if you're watching it so definitely make sure you follow us and you can actually find mine and nicole's personal twitters through the unch podcast one as well um right. so follow us over yeah there. and also our podcast got accepted by like pretty much all major podcast places that you'd want to look which is pretty exciting so you can go on apple spotify and find it there um hopefully this this week uh our audio is a little bit better i got my headset to work finally so that's sweet and we also had an audio problem when we started so like the first matchup or so might not be there it might be like a weird no open but we'll see we'll see what happens with that i might um, like Brandon tweak said, we'll be, yeah like Brandon said, we'll be back next sometime next week ish to do the final four and then maybe talk about cult of the lamb because i think we're both intending to play that tomorrow yeah. um but yeah in the meantime you can reach us at that twitter handle the unch podcast and then i do want to get a discord going too which is just kind of like a space for people to you know talk it doesn't really have to be about podcast stuff it's just like a good Anything. idea to have like a mutual space for people to talk about things that they have in common so but yeah that is it for today Braden. if you have anything else to say i'm good we went longer than expected i definitely don't think in the future we'd try to stay around that hour and a half mark like i know it's a time commitment for people to pop in but we did have like a decent amount of people watching along so super thankful for that um yeah just give us a follow check it out and uh we'll post all the details that we are on every streaming service now but there's a link on the twitter page and the youtube and maybe even in nicole's bio if i've given it to her that will open up a hub that will take you to any of the streaming services you want to get the podcast so you can get it all over the place but you guys are awesome thank you and thanks for the bits for me. Roy. bye